Yeah, I've wa only watched him a couple times because he. Oh, I can share. He streams late. Thing, but I don't want to. Later, doodle. Heal, guidance, and healer's blessing all on the same page. Ooh. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So you do get a bonus. This wasn't in the material section. This is on page 190 for item quality. Well, Completely different spot. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> do you want some flags? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, if you have an item that's made at a quality higher than normal, so an expert, master, or legendary, you get a bonus to the hardness. It's so if you have an expert quality item, it's a plus one. That's if you have a master, plus it's a four. plus three. And legendary is plus six. That's... So you can get an adamantine thing that's up to a plus 20. A legendary but. adamantine <laughs> weapon can be broken by pretty Bob. easy means. A level 1 character but. could realistically do 21 damage. I mean, yeah. My heavy steel shield that has a 9 hardness is only 20 silver. Yeah, you buy 1,000 of them. Oh, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> plus two let's see. The shield price for a legendary cost me to shield, it yeah. it's 6,000 silver pieces to get a legendary shield. So it's basically double. It'd be 1,200 <laughs> gold for a legendary adamantine what? shield. Interesting. Twelve hundred. That could That's be broken. Too much. That's twelve thousand gold in Pathfinder. <laughs> that could be broken by most anyone. A dragon going pink. <laughs> most anyone. Can you repair it? Come on, Sean, you can do it. Oh, that's probably yours. in a different section. I haven't. Okay. Got to yet, <laughs> well, so. that's something to look out for for sure. Yeah. I will keep nope. my eye open. You don't do I need Sean. to take craft arms and armor? I'm gonna say craft mac and cheese. Two. Two. <laughs> yes, please. One. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Are we live on yes. us? Yes. Yeah, Brad, we're live. Yeah, I'm trying to look for the... Sorry, Continuing our no, but I am path... Oh, path why does it turn dark mode off? Test piece adventure. Of shit. Tell us how you really feel. I don't like dark mode. For what? Or, I do like dark mode. I'm yeah, sorry. I was going to say, like wait. You over there, fucking light mode visual studio? We're going to have to fucking <laughs> evict you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I turn my brightness all the way up? Oh, okay. Mm. You're wearing sunglasses at your desk? Bro, what are you doing? Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> Actually, both my monitors are just white, and I have the polarizing lenses on yeah. my glasses, so I'm the only one who can read it. <laughs> get wrecked, nerds. It's like secret ink. Bro, what are you doing? Sorry, I want to get these special glasses. Uh, JP. Yeah. You wanted to change that followers count to higher than sixteen? Uh, no, it's actually followers, uh, an invisible number, subs sixteen. Okay. Invisible ink. It says for some <laughs> reason a bunch of the text like. Uh, mine did that too on my layout. I think it was because of the update, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Like, the text, like, disappeared. <laughs> did the Ooh. update kill random words? It killed a, a lot weird. of stuff was weird. Where is follower count? There's Hi, everyone. We're live to talk no. more about go. Pathfinder's playtest. Alright, we're fixed. Mm. And how much I hate it. No. Don't hate it. This is weird. There are things that need adjusting. All right, ladies and gentlemen. In our opinion. Read me a bedtime story, Brad. When every action counts, you enter the encounter mode of play. Oh. <gasps> In this oh. mode, you have turns during which you can use actions. <laughs> Your turn in sequence with everyone else's turn makes up a round. <laughs> A round is six seconds of time in the game world, Wait. not real world. Oh. <laughs> Speed, D&D. <&D. laughs> go, 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 go. It's your turn. Is that in the book? Your turn's over, your turn. Your turn's over, your turn. It's like space team. It gets to me. Fuck. <laughs> well, monsters all skip because you guys used up all the six seconds. Next. <laughs> That's a strategy now. We win. <laughs> all right. Um, so they separated out Encounter mode, exploration mode, and downtime mode. So we're going to go over the structure of an encounter mode. It's pretty similar to what you would normally expect in Pathfinder for those of you who are unfamiliar. Uh, so a, a round in encounter is six seconds of play in which everyone takes their turns in initiative order, which usually doesn't change unless people are weird and decide to like delay and stuff, but that's going to be a whole other thing. In any case, uh, so we all roll initiative at the beginning of an encounter. We do. <gasps> We roll perception. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. No, it says roll initiative. Hmm? It's perception. Oh. 
Oh. Step one, roll initiative. Oh. Interesting. And then there's seven paragraphs. Yeah. Oh. What? Why? Mm. Because there's no initiative. When the GM calls for it, you, roll initiative to determine your place in the initiative order, which is the sequence in which the character... I'm not reading all this. No, please don't. Um, you'll roll initiative when you enter a battle, which is often called a combat encounter. It's a default assumption. These rules are written for that type of encounter. Not sure what else you would use. You could do trap encounters, I guess. There's a tsunami encounter. A, Ooh. Don't uh, typically, you roll a perception check to determine your initiative. The more aware you are of your surroundings, the more quickly you can respond. I actually dig that rule. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes a GM might call on you for another type of check for the initiative check. For instance, if you were sneaking during exploration, you'd roll a stealth check instead. Alternatively, a social encounter could call for a deception or diplomacy mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. If you're about to start a wrestling match, the GM might ask how you want to play the opening move in the competition and decide based on your answer that your initiative roll should be your athletics or acrobatics. Or intimidation. <laughs> the GM rolls <laughs> initiative for any potential ad adversaries in the encounter. If the potential adversaries include a number of identical creatures, she could roll all for once as a group and have them take their turns within a group in any order she wishes. Yeah, because otherwise you're fucking insane. Um, she could even change the initiative order within the group from round to round. That sounds like fun. Just, well, that's if I have like eight goblins and they all act on initiative count 18. <laughs> Right. Goblin A could go first this round, but Goblin B could go first next round, and whatever I want. That's fine. Unlike a typical check, initiative rolls are ranked. Instead of being compared to a DC, the ranking sets in which... Yeah, you guys get the idea. You stack them. Highest goes first, lowest goes last, everybody else in the middle. What does it Target say? You. Ooh. Okay. New rule. If your initiative roll result is tied with an opponent's roll, the opponent goes first. Oh, okay. What? That's nice. Default. I always go really? first. Wow. Yep. Mm. What about if you're tied with another player? Rude. Ah, next <gasps> sentence. <laughs> if your initiative roll result is tied with another player, the other player goes you first. You can decide <laughs> between <laughs> yourselves who goes first. Mm, harmony at the table. When you reach that place, when you reach that place in initiative order. Oh, so you can decide like okay. one round, you can go first, the other round, nope. I. Nope. No, once you pick it. Next line. Once you've resolved who goes first, your place in the initiative order usually doesn't change during the encounter. No. I'm glad I'm asking these questions so we what? get this nice back and forth. <laughs> Step two. Play it's around. It's probably not a great idea that every assumption we make is nope. wrong. Nope. Nope. Really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the monsters can take any order they want as long as they're the same initiative order, but at the player's roll, <laughs> nope, fuck you. Fuck the precedent <laughs> we just set. Uh, a That's a round begins when the participant with the highest yeah. initiative order starts to turn and ends when the lowest initiative goes last. The process is taking turns, detail below. Step three, begin the next round. Step four, end the encounter. Oh. Right, okay. Got it. I Do thought you know. I thought there was only four steps, you only get two rounds of combat. Yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me, Brad. That's what we're doing. Every the combat. The very Every last combat. line is <laughs> two complete rounds. step two and three <laughs> until the end of the encounter. Um, once your foes are defeated or some sort of truce is reached or some other event or circumstance ends the combat, the encounter is over, you and other participants no longer need to follow or initiative order in a more freeform play of style it presumes, with the players typically moving into exploration mode. Sometimes at the end of an encounter, the GM will award experience points and treasure for the party to divvy up. Sometimes. I like that. Uh... You can keep it. All right. When it's your turn to act, <laughs> you can use actions, applicable activities, applicable, free actions, and reactions. When you're finished, your turn ends, and the character goes next. A turn is divided into three steps. Start your turn. Many things happen automatically at the start of your turn, and it's also a common point for tracking the passage of time for effects that last multiple rounds. Take the following steps, plus do anything else that's specified to happen at the start of your turn in any order you choose. Normally I would skip this part, because I feel like we understand how combat works, but they've it's already told weird. me to go fuck myself twice. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go over this. <laughs> if you create an effect that lasts for a certain number of rounds, you reduce the number of rounds remaining. This is it the start of your turn? Right. The effect ends if the duration has expired. For example, if you cast a spell on yourself the last three rounds in your first turn of a fight, it would affect you during that turn, decrease to two rounds at the start of your next turn, decrease to one round, start of your next, third turn, and expire at the beginning of your fourth. Which also is actually pretty helpful. 
Because that means uh, the nice magical effect that you cast on you actually lasts four rounds. Well, no. But it ends at the beginning of your turn. Right. But if you get like an opportunity attack or have to do something between your third and your fourth round, you actually still gain any benefits. It doesn't end at the end of your third turn. Um, you can use free actions or reactions that have a trigger of your turn begins or something similar. If you're dying or unconscious, attempt your recovery saving throw. The last step, starting your turn, is always the same. Regain your three actions and one reaction. If you have not spent your actions or your reaction from your last turn, you lose them. You can't hold over actions or reactions from one turn to another turn. I was going to bank them all and then go into my final combat with three million <laughs> actions. Uh, so we're looking to play Dragon Ball Z now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's just saving them. <laughs> <laughs> Our punches are so fast I can't even see them. <sighs> Uh, some abilities or conditions, such as the quick and slowed conditions, can change how many actions you regain and whether you regain your reaction. If a condition prevents you from being able to act, you don't regain any actions or your reaction. Step 2. Act. You can spend actions in any order you wish during your turn. What actions you can use often depend on your skills, feats, and items, but there are a number of default actions you can take, described under basic actions on page 307. For basic bitches That's only. That's in two pages, by the way. Uh, some effects will prevent you from acting. If you can't act, you can't use actions, activities, reactions, or free actions. Why do they separate those things like that? I don't know. During an encounter, successive actions must be spent within a single turn. If an activity requires three actions, you can't spend two actions on one turn and a third on your next. Once you have spent all three of your actions, your turn is over and the next creature's turn begins. Multiple attack penalty. Attacks are particularly strenuous and become less and less effective the more you use them during a single <laughs> this turn. This is particularly strenuous! <laughs> this is getting harder, which doesn't make any sense. It's particularly strenuous. Okay, yeah. so... <laughs> like, this push is pretty this strenuous. Brain. This let's, is particularly... Let's picture this in our and brain. And then six seconds later, your strength is returned. You're chopping wood. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can make three chops around. First one, great. Second one, you're a little tired. Third one... Holy shit, I'm tired. Six seconds later. Six seconds later, you are fully <laughs> recovered and ready to go again. You take a power breath in between those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 to be fair, that is how it's always been with multi-attack for 3.5 slash Pathfinder. Right. But it's so heavy. Did you take negatives there or you just lose your bonuses? Nope. It's Pathfinder always been a negative five. When you get multiple attacks, it's five less for each one. Yeah. So even when you end up with, like, five attacks, it's minus five for each one. I was a wizard forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the weird thing about Pathfinder, though, regular Pathfinder, is that usually your first and second attack will almost always hit. Yeah, but mm -hmm. your numbers your aren't as good. Your third one is an iffy, and your fourth one will almost always miss. Especially you're if, you're, like if you're a marshal. Yeah. yeah. That's but that's why it's good to go with weapons with high crit ranges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So, the second time you use an attack action, anything up with the attack trait, that is important. It doesn't have to be an attack. It's anything with an attack trait. Mm -hmm. If a spell is an attack trait, you still take a negative five. You take a negative five on your, attack, on your third attack, and any subsequent attacks, if you have a way to take more, you take a negative ten penalty. This penalty is called your multiple attack penalty. It applies only at this on your turn and resets at the end of your turn. So attacks of opportunity are not effective. Are always at the top, which makes this even weirder. Attacks <laughs> you can make outside of your turn might include their own penalties. Activities and encounters. Activities that take longer than a turn can't normally be performed during an encounter. Spells with a casting time of a minute or more are a common example of this, as are several skill activities. When you commit to... I'm going to hold this up so I'm talking at the thing instead of down. Um... When you commit to an activity during your turn in an encounter, you commit all the time that it takes. If the activity gets interrupted partway through, you don't get any of the activity's actions back. Activities are described in full on page 296. That is ten pages before where I'm at. Before? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I'm on 305, and it's telling me to flip back ten pages to figure out when that activity huh. is. It's choose your own adventure. If Pretty you much. go down the dark corridor, go to page 311. Yeah. <laughs> Reactions and encounters. Your reactions let you respond to what's happening around you immediately. The GM determines whether you can use reactions before your first turn begins, depending on the situation in which the encounter happens. All right, so tracking initiative, I keep track of it. However, once the combat order is set, it's not necessarily track the original initiative numbers. 
I can create a simple list using a series of cards or other markers, or use a Pathfinder combat pad, which has magnetic markers to allow for easy rearranging of the initiative order. Product placement. Product placement. <laughs> wow. Buy this. Damn. Changing the initiative order. Any method used to track the initiative order needs to be flexible because the order can change during an encounter. You just said that for two paragraphs. <laughs> well, don't forget to buy that. A creature oh, can delay to change its place in the order, in which case you can erase it from the list or pull its mark. I, I get it. I'm moving markers around. It's not that hard. All right. Mm -hmm. Two of hard. the simplest actions you can use during your turn are stride and strike. Page 308. And then it goes on to tell me which stride and strike are on the same page. Mm -hmm. Are you on page 308? No, I'm on 305. Oh. Uh, we should probably skip three pages. No. <laughs> no. Do this in order, Brad. Oh, it's no. actually listing them in two places. So we're going to go over it twice because apparently it's that important. Be careful Sorry. because they might have half of it here. And have true. Else. That is actually true. Can you tell me about shield uh, hardness again? Because wasn't that in three places? Yeah. yeah. To figure out everything. To figure out the shield, you need to go to like four places in the book. Four. I was like, yeah. cool, I gotta raise my shield. Nope. Yeah, it makes sense. Four there's armor. more to that. Five, because I forgot there's the action to raise the shield, which I think is kind yeah. of the action. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, stride is a action with a move trait that allows you to move up to your speed and feet. You often need to stride multiple times to reach a foe as far away or to run from danger. Estimation point. Reactions in the <laughs> game are offered triggered by move actions. Unlike other actions, however, a move action can trigger reactions and free actions not only when you start, but also every five feet in which you move that action or reaction. The step action lets you take five feet without triggering reactions. This reads like five a freestyle rap. <laughs> Strike is an action with an action trait that allows you to attack with a weapon you're holding or an unarmed strike, <laughs> such as a fist. Can we reword it so it flows better? Yeah. Try some slam poetry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't have to rhyme. You have to attack a creature with your reach if you're using a melee weapon or arm attack. Or attack a creature. <laughs> what? what? I, wh so, my problem with this sentence, this whole paragraph, is that it actually never says anything about that. Mm -hmm. Up until now. Okay. You can attack a creature within range if you're attacking with a ranged weapon. Your reach is how far you can physically extend a part of your body to make an unarmed attack or the farthest <laughs> distance you can reach with a melee weapon. This is typically five feet, but special weapons and larger creatures have longer reaches. If your range is how far away you can attack with a ranged weapon or some form of magical attack. Different weapons and magical attacks have maximum ma uh, ranges and they get less effective if you exceed the range increments. Striking multiple times has diminishing returns. The multiple attack penalty, blah, blah, blah. Blah, uh, blah, blah. Uh, the multiple... Attack penalty applies to attacks after the first, whether those are strikes, special attacks like a grapple use of athletic skill, or attacks from spells. Okay. <sighs> Did you see T. Cole's comment? This is back from, like, negatives on attacks. <laughs> the, P Where? the wording makes it sound like you cap at negative... Oh, you do. According to this, you cap at negative 10. Is he talking in chat? Yes. Yeah. Um, not it might be hidden. So now. this, the actual wording is: on your third attack and any subsequent attacks, if you have a way to take more, you take a negative ten penalty. Oh. So it's negative five, negative ten, negative ten, negative ten, all the way down. It's That's always kind 10. of nice. Yeah. So Ashley, remember how we were concerned that you would take a negative fifteen if you hear appointed? You won't. It would just be another negative. Just 10. negative ten. For that sweet. A extra action she gets to do after she saves with three hero points that she only gets two of at most. At most. I get three, don't I? You get one. You are the only one who gets three. Yeah, because you're doing something else outside the rest of us game. at most can get two. Two. And it really rotates because we rotate who does dinner so the, every week. The week <laughs> so we have that organized cooked. who yeah, gets three. two this week. I get three. Yeah. <laughs> so if you cook, you get three. If you don't, two. What are you doing? Oh, it's just not updating. So I'm re-adding it. We're breaking things. We're re-adding chat, <laughs> chat. Sorry. Um, so, once your first turn begins and you... Why is this... Oh. What page are you on? I want to follow along. 305. You may follow along whenever you're ready. Your reactions let you respond to what's happening around you immediately. The GM determines whether you can use reactions before your first turn begins, depending on the situation in which the encounter happens. This actually continues on to the next page, okay, even though it looks like the rest of the page is, like, that was all it was going to say. Um, once your first turn begins and you gain your actions and reaction, you can use one reaction per round anytime it's triggered. Reactions can't be used on anyone's... Can. 
can be used on anyone's turn, but only when a trigger is satisfied. If you don't use your reactions, you lose it at the start of your next turn, do you typically gain a reaction at the start of that turn. Some reactions are specifically meant to be used in combat and can change how a battle plays out drastically, exclamation point. One example of a reaction is Attack of Opportunity, which fighters receive at first level. And then they list the Attack of Opportunity power. Yes. For some reason. On page 306. Trigger! A creature within your reach uses a manipulate action or a move action, makes a range attack, or leaves a square during a move action it's using. Okay. Ooh, that's different. Uh, make a melee strike against a triggering creature at negative two. If the attack hits and a trigger was a manip manipulate action, you disrupt that action. This strike doesn't count towards your multiple attack penalty, and your multiple attack penalty doesn't apply to it. The fact that they have to add this to that actually upsets me. Because they already stated it. Because the they rules. already stated it earlier. And the thing that's weird is that they don't... So, reach weapons in Pathfinder... Your threatened space was always five feet, and reach weapons never increased it. This does. Mm -hmm. So if I have a spear, I can stab you from ten feet away, even though you're moving away. I have a spear. Also, it's not moving... It doesn't specify, like, into a threatened space. It's or literally out of. just leaving any square during a move action. Mm -hmm. Which is a little weird. So... Oh, I can't move up to an enemy. Yeah. If I have a spear, I get to attack you for free when you go to hit me. If you're a fighter. Only yeah. if you're a fighter. Only if I'm a fighter. Well. All right. Because 5e, they simplified it. It's There's a zone. If you're in the zone, that's cool. If you leave the zone, that's when they get the attack. Yeah. That's it. That's I like it. that better. <laughs> uh, this reaction allows you to make a melee strike of a creature within reach. You, I just read that. <laughs> Are you okay? Word for Okay, word. so... All right, so the sentence is, one example of a reaction is attack of opportunity, which fighters receive at first level. Then it lists the attack of opportunity thing, which I just read to you. Then it follows that up by saying exactly what was in the attack of opportunity bubble. Because it's a block. It's literally just a block that's slightly format, formatted slightly differently. That's the attack of opportunity, like, power. And it says everything that it's just about to say. Oh. All right, so um, the triggering moves diagram above illustrates examples of movements that might trigger an attack of opportunity from a creature without reach and one with reach. What page? Uh, 306. 306. You'll notice this reaction allows you to use a modified basic action, a strike. This follows the rules on dependent abilities found on page 296. I feel like that is wrong because we went over this. I want to see the picture. Dude, oh, no, they did. Okay. Um, and step three is end your turn. Once you've done all the things you want to do with your actions, you can you reach the end of your turn. Take this following steps plus resolve anything else specified to happen at the end of your turn in any order you choose. Then you pass play to the next character in the initiative order. Huh? This is very complicated. Okay, so this is weird for a number of reasons. So take the following steps plus resolve anything else specified to happen at the end of your turn in any order you choose. First one, and any effects that last until the end of your turn. Okay. The example spells with the duration of concentration at the end of your next turn, blah, 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 blah. Two, if you had the persistent damage condition, you take the damage at this point. But if I had given you the persistent damage condition that, that lasts until the end of your next turn, can't I end it first? No, because you do the steps, then you resolve... That's oh, plus. You're right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It says I can do it in any order I choose. So if you tell me I take persistent damage until the end of my next turn, I'm going to choose to end that effect and then take the persistent damage, which I don't have to do because I don't have it anymore. Good luck ending it. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's probably why they did it that way then. Um, in theory, if you have it for one turn, you could pat it out before you get burnt. If you roll that net 20. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, you may also attempt any saves for your afflictions at this time. Any other conditions change at the end of your turn, such as a frightened condition decreasing in severity. You can use free actions or reactions that have a trigger of your turn ends or something similar. Your basic actions are available to all creatures and are how the game represents common tasks like moving around, attacking, and helping others. Every creature can use basic actions, activities, free actions, and reactions, except in some extreme circumstances, and many are used with great frequency. Most notably, you'll use interact, step, stride, and strike a great deal. 
many feats and other actions call upon you to use any of these basic, basic actions or modify them to produce different effects. For example, a more complex action might let you stride up to double your speed instead of just up to your speed. Mm -hmm. And a large number of activities include a strike. Actions that are used less frequently but are open to most creatures are presented in specialty basic actions and reactions on page 309. In two pages. <laughs> These typically have requirements that characters are less likely to meet, such as wielding a shield or having a burrow speed. Don't worry, guys. We're going to get the shields. Again. Yay. I know how they work. We're good. You do? If you can cast spells, the activities and actions for spell casting are, are found on page 195 and 196. Yep, yep, yep. And if you have any magic items, the activities for those appear on 376. Wait, what? Oh, we're just moving everything everywhere. It's fine. <laughs> we don't need all of our actions Wait, in one easy to reference place. Where's my spells? Over here. Wait, what page? 376. What the hell? <laughs> no, spell casting yeah. was 195 through 196. Oh, right. What the uh, heck? Magic items are 376. I don't know oh. 195? Yeah. yeah. Aid. You may aid an ally. <laughs> Trigger. An ally is about to use an action, activity, free action, or reaction that requires a skill check. Requirements. The ally is willing to accept your aid. You are prepared to help. See below. I'm going to help you. I'm not willing. <laughs> <laughs> no means no. No means no. Does it say that? No. It should. It should indeed. Uh, you try to aid. You try to aid your allies. Check in some way. To use this reaction, you must first prepare to help. Usually by using an action during your turn. You must explain to the GM exactly how you're going to help and determine whether you can aid your ally. Yes. So on my turn, I have to determine what's going to happen on their turn to and say I want them. to aid them. Yes. Because you have to specifically... It's, it's cool, funny. I'm clairvoyant. You can't just help. You have to say, I want to help her stab in that. So this... And if they don't stab, your character's just like... This 100%, I know what this is for. This is for organized play. It's when one person has to make a... Like a, a lore check to know something. Only one person gets to make that check. Not everyone yeah. at the table can roll it. So everyone else can try and aid, where they make a check and there's a DC, and then if you get successes or failures based on the little results here, you add to the person who's making the one check's result. Here's my favorite That's part about this. what it's for. Because it gets better. The typical DC, uh, when you use your aid reaction, attempt a skill check of a type... Oh, this is a reaction. Mm -hmm. You use your action to ready it, and the reaction happens technically on yeah, a person's okay. turn who's making the check. God. You aid, 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 and then they get all the bonuses, and then they make the check. That's how it ready? would work. When okay. you use your aid reaction, attempt a skill check of a type decided by the GM. Doesn't have to be the same thing. Nope. Uh, the typical D DC for aid is 15, which is strange because your skill checks go up by one every single level. Right. So, so by level five, points. it no longer matters that the DC is 15. Yeah. Um, at, but at the GM's discretion, it could be 20. Or DC 10, if it's easy. The GM can add so any... So max is at 20. Yeah. Why doesn't it just let the DM? It gets, yeah. it gets really better in like three seconds. I love it when things get really better. Why. Same. A GM can add any relevant traits to your A reaction or to your preparatory action depending on the situation. Success, they get a plus two. Critical success, they get a plus four. Keep in mind that four of you can help one person. And by the time you're level ten, you're going to auto-pass <laughs> this yeah. with a critical success. It's great. Someone's getting a plus 16 on whatever the hell it is they're trying to do every single round. But we all have to Jokes sacrifice like an action we were yeah. that to person. help them. We're in the middle of like a dungeon. We're like, man, I really wish I had the historical knowledge. Roll history. <laughs> well, luckily you get plus 16 to this. So. <laughs> I spend one of my actions to retrieve a book. Okay. <laughs> From where? So my question is... Is if I choose on my way. turn to use an action to aid another, yeah. do I have to specify who I'm aiding? Yes. Or just yeah. yes. You have to specify who you're aiding and, and what how. Yeah. And then it's, I determine what skill you use to give them the bonus. It's only but for skill not But they may not even use it. But they may not even use it. Can you not use it on attack? Rachel, no, I'm going to help yes. you with athletics. About to use an action, and then you're going to roll medi medicine heal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, medicine heal. Medicine heal. I, I'm I don't very know what trained it is. in that. Here's my favorite part about the aid action. Medicine. If you critically fail, oh, they you. take you. a negative Thanks. two. Oh, you. Could oh, you can you accidentally can fuck, fuck them up. Your friends <laughs> over. But like, if you <laughs> work though, it makes it impossible. You won't. By you the can. time you're level ten, you can't fail this check. Yeah, but how do you critically fail? By One. missing the DC by 10. Yeah. 
or at one. At what level do you, oh, you do critically fail on a yep. one? No. Yes. You, you only critically fail on a one if you don't succeed. Yeah, you have Correct. to, it, it's yeah. both, yeah. So you have to meet both Pass criteria. like level five, you're never going to critically yeah. fail. Well, if you fail and it's a one, it's a critical fail. Right. But, but you but, won't fail. But eventually you're going to get at least a plus 14. Eventually, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. skill you want to use. No, but like, like your by raw, you actually... Proficiency. There's like all this stuff that goes in that, your ability score and stuff. It's not a lot, but like... If it depends Assuming on what you're I'm rolling aiding, for. I'm probably aiding with a good a bit skill yeah. check. Yeah. Like, so I at least get like. All right. I at least get a trained bonus. And I at least get probably a four from at least oh, a four from the ability better. score. Oh, it gets even better. Like. Yeah, I mean a level <laughs> five. I'm adding five. But Other wait, there's more. Action. This is what you were looking for. Yeah. Oh, for attack. Assist. Uh -huh. Assist. Uh -huh. Requirements: yeah. An enemy is within your melee reach and is within the reach of one or more of your allies. I would like to specify that it does not specify within oh. the melee reach of <laughs> yeah. one of your allies. It could be, you could shoot at them. What about mm -hmm. spell reach? Same yeah. thing? I it's, all say. it's all attacks. <laughs> okay, there are cool. spell attacks. Yeah. yeah. You help an ally attack an enemy or foil the enemy's attacks against one of your allies? Hmm? Choose. Maybe. maybe. Oh, choose one enemy you're adjacent to and one ally adjacent to that enemy. Oh, okay. So that's melee. It is melee. I then attempt a myself. melee attack against the enemy's AC. Hold on. <laughs> the creature takes no damage if you succeed. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, instead, you either impose a negative two circumstance penalty to the creature's attack rolls, or you grant a, your chosen ally a plus two circumstance penalty to attack rolls against your chosen enemy. You choose which effect you create. The penalty or bonus lasts until the start of your next turn. Critically success, as a success, but the penalty is negative four, the bonus is plus four. Critically fail, you help them attack your ally. It's a reverse. Of it's the a twos. reverse. Okay, so the wording on this is weird for two reasons. One, you help an ally attack an enemy or foil an enemy's adjacent. An enemy's attacks against one of your allies. Choose one al enemy you're adjacent to and one ally adjacent to that enemy. Then attempt a melee attack against the enemy's AC. It does not specify that that enemy has to be attacking that adjacent ally. Well, it it wouldn't. This isn't a reaction. This is an action. Right. But so so let's read it. Right. You help an ally attack an enemy, or foil the enemy's attacks against one of your allies. Mm -hmm. Choose one enemy that you're adjacent to. Right. And then one ally adjacent to that enemy. Right. We, need, we need minis. Then attempt a melee attack against the enemy's AC. Right. But it never said that it has to be that ally that gets the bonus. So, yeah, does everyone get That's the true. Oh, that is, yeah. So, what if there's multiple allies adjacent to that enemy? Yeah, that's the question. Wait, what bonus? The plus four. The aid. Because it says. The creature takes no damage. Instead, you either impose a minus two circumstance penalty to that enemy's attack rolls against your chosen ally. Uh -huh. So you're defending the, cho the ally you chose, or you're giving the ally a plus two bonus against okay. that enemy. It says chosen, okay. so it's always okay. those two. You choose them so for the effects. Why can't I help you attack an adjacent enemy from range? Yeah, why, why, true. why can't your archer shoot an arrow at it? Yeah. Why can't I grab Rachel and put him in front of me in between Joe while Joe shoots at him? You can't like, Because it. it doesn't specify in the requirements within reach I of see one what you or mean. more of your allies. I see what you mean. And it says one or more of your allies. That's the weird part. Yeah. Oh my god, Teekle. Do you count as your own ally? Because you could... <laughs> You could use two yeah, actions. <laughs> Basically, true strike. <laughs> That's clever. Yeah. If you count as an ally. Well, the other the part that bo bothers me is in the requirements text. It doesn't specify melee reach of one of your allies, but it gets, and it specifies it more than one. Yeah, it's within your melee reach, and within the reach of one or more of your allies. But then, it as your requirements, it specifies that it has to be melee. Yeah, wouldn't it just be within range of an ally? Or yeah. within melee of... Why I, I see your point now that you can help 
help an ally far away hit something better if you're next to it. That makes sense. Right. I would argue that you can't make something easier to hit if you're shooting it, but if you're mele in melee with it, you should be able to help anyone. Yeah. Hit it. I mean, There's you no think you'd be distracting it, but mm -hmm. that's just my. If um, something's going to oh. be lead with arrows. Oh, and reach, yeah. It's like. Uh, oh. And Tico just pointed out mm -hmm. something. Yeah, the reach thing. So choose one ally enemy you're adjacent to and one ally adjacent to that enemy. But if that ally is not adjacent to that enemy because it has a reach weapon, what you if, can't help him. Well, right. Ashley is case in point. She has a spear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. That's where it's weird. Yeah, I definitely agree there. All right. Mm. That should be within threatened range. Yeah. Threatened makes sense. It's, Instead of adjacent. Pretty weird. All right. Anyway, okay. Okay. and I I do agree because like in any video like I'm using video games, but if I like turn a boss, like it can't see you guys. Because, like, it's facing yeah, me, yeah. so you guys That's can shoot it. It They're can't no dodge, it can't do, like, certain things. Aggro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the tank runs through the boss, spins it around, the rogue stabs in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> so I should be able to aid. You should. Uh, and then our next thing is crawl. This one's pretty self-explanatory. You, uh, you crawl? You move five feet. Well, the requirements you're are you're prone, and your speed is at least ten feet. They had to make sure... The I can't crawl if I can't. If you're not prone. No, but if my speed is too fast? It's at too least. Slow. Yeah, no, yeah. you can't crawl. Oh. If your speed is five feet, you can't crawl five feet. Oh. Sorry. Wait a second. Wait, what? <laughs> you just go <laughs> crawl and lay there. That's all you can do. <laughs> you can so if I have, let's say, I don't know, I'm over encumbered, or for some reason I can only move five feet around. You turn into me. If I, <laughs> if I lay down, you're dead. Oh, you if I lay can't get down, up. You're done. I can't do anything. And your friends can't look at you. <laughs> don't, yeah, you wear a bracelet. And then a whole town of commoners can come beat you up, and you're just going to be in internal agony because they can't, <laughs> they kill, they can't you. kill you. You won't be in agony. They can't hurt you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> your fists are just like glancing off. And you're like, thanks for the massage, guys. No, they can't hit you. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just like, can't make contact. What? Why did they do this? <laughs> can I? They could drop the sword, I guess. You think they? Like, I don't. It would just damage. like. Whoop. <laughs> it just right. goes around you. Huh. Maybe the solution is somehow dropping a boulder. <laughs> yeah, right. Rock on, on the naked, unconscious, dying wizard. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. I figure out how the to whole do town it. has to get together to lift. You the beat the game. Yeah. Over the wizard. They've got to like build a catapult or something. How have I fallen and I can't get up or crawl away? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of like <laughs> slow conditions. You that's can such a that. friggin' arbitrary. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your I speed is at least ten prone feet. Is fine. That makes yeah. sense. You're you have to be prone it to crawl. Be you're you are mobile and you are able to move. <laughs> you, why ten feet? It's so anyway. Like I'm fine with the speed what being the only five feet. You, though? you move five feet. That's it. So if you have five feet, so you just even don't get if it. you're hasted and your speed is <laughs> sixty feet, if you're prone, you can only go. Eh. All right, so. <laughs> So let's try this out. Later on, we're going to get a stopwatch, me on the ground outside, <laughs> Oh yes, please. and a measuring tape. We're going to see how far I can get in six <laughs> seconds on the ground. Because uh, I'm pretty sure it's I'm farther so than five feet. I'm so excited What this. is your speed, though? I mean, it's what I'm, we'll I'm a human. I'm a level one comic. No, so we can determine well, it. Well, 25. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'll can count six half. seconds. This assumes see. everyone oh, yeah, Galarian's real right. fast. No. Can you run 90 feet in about <laughs> six seconds? Teagle said, take the camera. We will live stream to Facebook or I something. Will absolutely <laughs> take yeah, part of this. Yeah, if we actually did this, you'd bet your ass. Hashtag the Pathfinder Diaries. No, but like, what if you, it's, it's about 90 feet, right? If, if a normal Guys, person runs 30, YouTube you can series. Let's do run. it. Yeah. Triple move. Because I can, you know, just decide to triple run. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We had to find out if run is an actual action. Or no, but we got to oh, no, get a base. Oh, no, you can stride through Stride, stride, stride. That's all it is. We got to get a baseline. How far can Brad move in six seconds? Then yes. we extrapolate that to his speed. Oh, don't forget. he crawls. It's not 90 feet. It's 75. Humans only move at 25. Everyone in right. Galarian got a little extra weight on them, like the school well, that have been moon keeping up with into it, it made gravity heavier, <laughs> so everyone's just stuck a little. It's more like you only move five feet when you're crawling. You it's actually, okay. You can't get that much farther. But we can't do it properly, because to weigh him down, we put a book, book bag on him Look, and put rocks in it, but in the game, that doesn't matter, because uh, it's not bulk. The effect yeah. of gravity <laughs> on your feet Brad, is hold far these higher 999 so coins. <laughs> They won't slow you down. Yeah, Take separate. one more, and now you're slow. Separate. Have you ever oh, had a pocket full of pennies? Because I'll tell you, it slows you oh, down. We can also do that experiment on the Pathfinder Diaries. This oh, should yeah. be a we'll we'll YouTube series. 2,000 pennies. With pennies. 
<laughs> Can we just get a video of us stuffing backpacks into <laughs> backpacks? Into backpacks. Can we just go to Walmart? With 1,999 pennies. <laughs> Oh my god. We'll just go to Walmart and be like, we're experimenting. <laughs> well, Target has backpacks on sale right now for $5, so we can actually do this right. thing. The stream. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, let's uh, move to delay. Bolt? Would he still not be able to move? No. No. He was five. He was five. That man, that man, okay. fastest man. <laughs> All right. Fastest man alive. Lays down. Everybody uh, stay in speed. Uh, he's like, he booking just... it. Everyone's like, wow, he's so fast. Alright, mm -hmm. now everybody get in a line, lay down. Wow, they're Crawl. all super <laughs> <laughs> Everybody do the flop. <laughs> all right, oh so let's Amazing. go into delay. Because this one bothers me for a, a number of reasons, but we'll get there. <coughs> so, you bide your time, waiting for the right moment to act. The rest of your turn doesn't happen yet. Instead, you're removed from the initiative order. You can return to the initiative order as a free action triggered by the end of any other creature's turn. Nice. This free action, this permanently changes your initiative to the new position. Mm -hmm. You can't use reactions until you return to the initiative order. If you delay an entire round without returning to the initiative order, this is the part that bothers me, you, the actions from the delayed turn are lost, your initiative doesn't change, and your next turn occurs at your original position in the initiative order. That just means you passed. But what if, let's say that yeah, Rachel goes that's first that's and I go last. Right. But I need to act between her and Rachel. Right. You're I fucked. can't move there. No. Mm -mm. That's how it is in Pathfinder. What if you're at the one, bottom two. of the initiative order and you want to do something? Yeah, you want to do something halfway through. You, you can't, can't delay at the bottom. You, you can't. Can. You delay and you just lose your turn. If you're at yeah. the bottom of the initiative order, and let's say I'm a fighter, and yeah. I want to spend. You roll the a, one on your initiative, but yeah. you want to go after the wizard. It cycles around. It the doesn't say it resets at the end of the round. It resets on your turn again. So we can go through zero, and then you go back up no. to, like... No, if you delay that? an entire round without returning to the initiative order. Because the round yeah, is... Yeah, a round back to your turn. But, like, Pathfinder it's usually defines no, a round. No, a round starts around at the beginning of the initiative order and ends at the end of the initiative order. Yeah, that's usually how it works. Is if that I'm how it's defined in this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's... You're sure? Yes. I feel like okay. we did read that. I do kind of remember We might have skipped that part. That. Yeah. No, I vaguely remember talking about that. A round yeah. begins when the participant with the highest initiative roll starts their turn, and it ends when the one with the lowest initiative... Ends their turn. So if you're at the end of the so initiative and you delay, you're just fucked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you can't delay at the end of the initiative. You have to go. That's weird. That's really unclear because that's dumb. I don't I think, think that's intent, their intent. Intent yeah. wise, is yeah. right. you can delay the, the length of which yeah. of a round, yeah. which would be until your and turn. And on, on your next turn, you lose your action. Because that's how I turn a full yeah. of action. That's how I read it. Right. Initially. But you can't as a as a player, you can't move up in the initiative order by delaying. You would miss a turn. No. All right, so the, the intent of this rule is that I can't delay until my next turn and get six actions. That's right. the intent. Because yeah. if I take it right before I would normally go, that's my new turn order. Right. Mm -hmm. The way it's worded with the wording of a round is not what it means. Yeah. Because I understand the, the intent, of, but the, yeah. the way it's worded is not that. Mm -hmm. The way like, it's worded like is... Like, let's say I'm a clerk, right? Mm -hmm. My initiative is one. I go last. Mm -hmm. My fighter is 60 feet away. I need him to move towards me before I can heal him. Right. I can't delay until his turn when he moves for towards me so I can go after him. Yeah. Rules as it, written. As it's written. As, yeah, it's, written, as it's written. Super broken. I can't wait for something else to happen. I just always go last. And I can't do anything else. Yeah, Tico, you're right. Like, that's what we're saying. It's weird. Yeah. You can't go up. You can only go down. I think I th as it's written. Think that's what they were intending, but it's not written. Though. I'm yeah. fairly right. certain what they intend is that you. Because when I like reading it over quick, I thought it was that. Right, but because that's what you'd assume. Mm -hmm. That's so weird. Because they word it that way because they don't want someone to like that wants to use six actions for like a ton of meta magic or something. Yeah. To like delay. Well, you until you can't delay. Time. It's it the trigger for delay is your turn begins. You just immediately start delaying. Yeah. So your turn can come up next whenever, and then your initiative changes to that number. But it can't meet anywhere. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's what they were trying to f say, but very poorly. Yeah, yeah, which is how it should work. You should be able to move up in the initiative into the next round if I needed to wait for something else. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, I'm The thing that screwed. lost is a round is defined by here as... 
highest initiative to lowest initiative, yeah. that's a round. It's not a defined as a length of time, which is what it's trying to use to portray what I think they're trying to. But I mean, intend. most I don't uh, most rule systems around is the highest initiative to lowest initiative. Yeah, that's how roll twenty, for example, handles it. Like if you track rounds, it's yeah. it cycles around. Right. No, time. yeah, I, I'm not disagreeing yeah. there, but no, I, I think. Oh no. Around using as like round here is a, the problem. Yeah, yeah. as a it should length be, of time. They should have said at the if, if, if at the, like the start of your next turn, if yeah. you are mm -hmm. still delaying, you lose the, the action. Yeah, and you stay yeah. where you are. That's what they yeah. should have said. Right. Not using the term round is just an oversight. That's all they fucked did. it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 round needs to be relative. Rounds are a stack, not a circle. Like, Rounds a yeah. stack. Agree. Yeah. Right. It's not a set period of time. Yes, that's adjustable. Right, but that's but, not what it says. Yeah, we understand. It. I agree with you. Yeah, it's just that's not how the wording is. Right, it's once the round ends, which is whoever has the lowest initiative goes. That's it. Because you just lose the delay. You action. stop delaying and you, and you go back where you originally change. were. So you like we one hundred percent think it should be what you're saying. Right. Yeah, it's just that's yep. right, word it weird. Anyway, terrible. Uh, you can't use delay to avoid negative consequences, which is good. That's yeah. Fine. Drop. Your so turn this? begins, your turn ends, or you start to use an action, you drop an item you're holding. What? The trigger for dropping an item is your turn begins, your turn ends, or you start to use an action. It's basically... It's just so you can do it dropping whatever. dropping a free action? It is. But just not on your turn. this way? Because everything has to have a trigger. That's Except weird. for the next I two. thought free actions can be used at any time. Without a trigger. But this isn't a free action, it's a reaction. No, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Oh, no. it's a reaction? Is it? That's what I'm saying. I don't why, know. No, this why is, is a free action. It's a free action. It's a free I didn't action think free actions always rules. needed a trigger. That's kind of weird. I thought free actions could go whenever you want. Well, this one, I guess you can. You know what? It might have been worded as free actions are whenever the action is, or the trigger is, whatever. That's weird. Okay, bye, Teagle. Bye, Teagle. Um, so you can only drop actions on your turn. That's it. Start your turn, end of your turn, or whenever you, you make an action. action. Uh, Which you is what I'm okay with that. Drop prone as a move action. Pretty straightforward. I actually don't agree with that. If I want to drop an item for someone else to like grab on the way by, that's that's a different action. That's what? interact, in, interact. I Which is actually what we're about to do. Yeah. Oh, is there free action? Uh, that would no. be their action. Like if it's happening on their turn, they would use an interact action with you to take it. Um. Mm. Ooh, but I no, want to drop it right before they no, get no. Out. No, this is actually worse. You <laughs> use your hand or hands to manipulate an object or the terrain. You grab uh -huh. an unattended or stored object, open a door, do a similar action. You may have to attempt a skill check to determine if your interact action was successful. By raw, the, the item has to be unattended or stored, which means that if another character is holding it, you cannot take it from them. By raw, you can use your hands to manipulate an object. Right. That's handing off. Yeah, but you can't If you rule that's not in raw. But yeah, no, but by raw, I can't let go until it's my turn. Yeah. You're just gonna be fighting over an object, and I can't. You have to run up to me, to hold on to it, you. and then wait for me to let go. What? I think you're being a little rules lawyer. -y no, but that's what the, that's by raw. It Manipulate matter. an object constitutes letting go of an object and handing it to a person. If you don't interpret, no, but you're taking an object, it from me. I, you're, right. I I don't get to manipulate. You, you're manipulating. Do you ha do you have to l grab onto my fingers and open them for me? They also say you grab an unintended stored object, open a door, or do some similar action. Right. Some yeah. similar action. If you can't interpret that as I take something from you, you got. But I have to let go. I think it's no. You can take it from me. I have to let go. <laughs> I mean, I get I get what JP's saying because they went That's really the rules heavy thing. and very specific. For I was going to say it's weird they made it so specific that they added yeah, unintended they just or let you free action let go. Free that would have been the actual action flow. The fact that they made drop to... not a free action is weird. Yeah. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. I should be able to drop so, it whenever I want. To give you an well, example. It's pr it's pr again, this is probably for organized play, which is just full yeah. of little munchkins looking for everything they can it's true. manipulate. So I am not the worst munchkin. <laughs> not even the close. Yeah. I think they're closest. You're holding I just spit. <laughs> a bowl Okay. of oil. Okay. I come over to you okay. and light it on fire. <laughs> you have to hold that bowl <laughs> until your turn. Then you can let go. It's only six seconds. Yeah, yeah, but for six whole bad. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> on someone else's turn, you, that person <laughs> finds out that the scepter you're holding is cursed. 
You have to wait until it's your well, turn to go. Like and God <laughs> forbid you're at the bottom of the initiative order. <laughs> and it you also need to sucks. wait. <laughs> what if you could take an attack of opportunity, but your hand is occupied? Are you a fighter? That's taking an action. <laughs> I would take that as taking an action. But like a reaction or couldn't you like not drop it or, you know? No, but it says at the start of an action. A reaction oh, okay. An action. So yeah. you could. So at the start of a reaction, you drop, drop your it. flaming bull. Yes. But you would have to take a reaction somehow. Oh, uh, no. It's your turn begins, your turn ends, or you start to use an action. Actions are different than reactions. Oh, that is true. Yeah, I was about to say. Which are like, different. Mm. Yes. Also, what? there's the entire issue it's that if you're turn. a fighter and you're holding a bowl yes. and you want to take an attack of opportunity, you don't have your weapon drawn. Right. Yep. Pathfinder's always been very sticklery for you have Do to have you your weapon both drawn. Your hands? You Can I, like but if what I, if I wanted to use two hands to attack with a weapon I have drawn? And I have something in my other hand. You can drop Normally, uh, I can free action grab. There is a change. Change. Um, okay. Let's, okay. Let's go into grip. speaking. Change grip. That's a what? Thing. Speak. As a yeah. or original act. Pathfinder, I could drop my shield and do a two-handed attack mm -hmm. without we're, wasting we're an action. Speaking? Speaking. Okay. Yeah. As long as you can act, you can also speak. You don't need to spend any type of action, reaction, or free action to speak. What about oh. resonance? That's good. <laughs> but a round <laughs> represents six <laughs> seconds of time. No, that's for the bar. You can usually speak... At most, a single second sentence or so per round. Special uses of speech, such as attempting a deception skill or... A sentence per round? Yeah. Six seconds is a long time. Let's time it. I can say a lot more than a sentence in six Can't you, in seconds. All right. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three, start. Hello, my Special name is Joe. How are you? The my favorite color is blue. Providing a I verbal like casting to tie action my shoes. Time. Action. Oh, my God, it's really long. <laughs> that's a wrong that's sentence. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. Hey, JP, how many, how's it going? How many sentences? Do you want to go? I got through like three. Yeah. Yeah. So, special uses of the of speech, such as attempting a deception skill check to lie or providing a verbal casting action, can require spending actions and follow their own rules. So, if you say, "Where were you on the night of June 6th? and I want to stay at home, I have to wait till my turn. <laughs> You're getting into the yeah. semantics of. Turn this is why turn order is... Uh, well, yeah. I would say that would, would be... Yeah. It, it's, that's a turn-based... Any turn-based game that's getting for role-playing. The, they all yeah, suffer from that. Yeah, they all see mm -hmm. that. I won't call out this system I, specifically I, for that. I'm pretty sure using the deception skill check to lie is, is not an action in Pathfinder originally. I think doing skill checks on your turn is. Like, I think uh, to do a skill check, is you always have it. I think it's weird making speak, speaking an action. It's technically it not. It's okay. technically, yeah. It's a but weird board. They're describing how you do it. But yeah. skills are, that's right? All. Yeah. But that's how it was. But you couldn't just, like, skill check in free form. Like, technically, in Pathfinder, I don't think, like, if, I, if it's not my turn, I couldn't just skill check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was never like that. It was always kind of implied to, like, around six seconds. We do yeah. that's supposed where, like, to be, like... Yeah. Ashley asks a question, and Brad says, roll this. But in Pathfinder rules, like, you actually are supposed to, mm -hmm. to not okay. just that's all. throw those out. There's not really much else here. Uh, critical hit damage. When you double the damage on a critical success with a strike. I don't know why this is here. No, this is really odd and out of place. Like, why the heck is this block here and not with actual combat rules, like, yeah. for rolling attacks? Oh, that's, uh, that's, that, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, Lord Arctic asked, but is that under initiative order or out of initiative? Because it doesn't say? For what? Speaking? For speaking? Can For you speak speaking? out of turn? Yeah, it says it's a free action. It says as long as you can act, you can also speak. It specifies that uh, you don't need to take any type of action, reaction, or right. reaction to you just, speak. You can but, just talk. But first, right. first sentence, as long as you can act, you can also speak. Yeah. So I when it's it not means... your turn, you can't act, so you can't speak. But this Unless you're a fighter who has an attack of opportunity, then you can talk when you're doing your attack of opportunity. <laughs> So that is literally what that says. What if I'm using a reaction? Damage is in the middle of actions, this but makes we're going to go over sense. it anyway. When you double the damage on a critical critical success with a strike or with any other action or activity that multiplies damage, use the following rules to determine such values you multiply. Why the fuck is that here? Because this book was organized by. This is how Goblins? to deal damage in the middle of actions. No, they would have done a better job. Here, for hey. everyone who's, who does not have this currently available to them. So this is the actions page. So there's one and another one. 
Like, so you see all the actions on the page? Here, I'll uh, back up so you can see a little bit more. So all of these are actions, the whole page. And then all of a sudden over here is just a block for critical hit damage. <laughs> Don't know why. Doesn't belong the here. The attack, at, like, strike action was a page. No, strike two. is a page before and on this page. It's so it would have made more yeah. sense, like, a page ahead. The, actually, critical hit damage would have been better in, like, a combat section. Yeah, like, but, like... calculating damage, how HP works, dying... It might actually no. be in both places. You're, True. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, so... Anytime you multiply damage, do this. Roll double the usual number of damage dice for your weapon or unarmed strike. Add double your ability modifier to damage, if one applies. Add double any circumstance Whoa. and conditional bonuses and penalties to damage. Don't double extra dice that occur only on a critical hit, such as damage from the deadly weapon tree. It's on two pages. Critical hits. All right. So I just looked ahead a little bit. Mm. It's here because there's no, like, block about making attacks straight up. It's included with strike, I guess. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's talk about leap. Uh, you can jump. That's pretty much the entire thing. Is just You land in the space where your leap ends, meaning you can typically clear a five-foot gap if your speed is between 15 and 30 feet. That means I can jump over a block. Wow, this is weird. You take a, a careful but short jump. I had to go over this because jump used to be its own thing. Uh, you can leap up to 10 feet horizontally if your speed is at least 20, 15, or up to 15 feet horizontally if your speed is 30. So just so we know, 10 e 15 equals 10, 30 equals 15. I don't know about you guys, but usually... I don't think I could jump 10 feet right now. As that actually. has no correlation that makes sense. No, because 10 is 66% of 15. 15 is only 50% of 30. And it's weird because most races are 25. So you're just jumping 10. Anyway, you land in the space where your jump ends, meaning you can typically clear a 5-foot gap if your speed is between 15 and 30 feet, or a 10-foot gap if your speed is between 30 feet or more. Oh, you're not jumping 10 feet, you're jumping 5. Oh, I could jump 5. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know what... <laughs> I hope we don't need to jump across any buildings. So we know how far elves can jump. Yep. You can make a vertical leap. You move up to three feet vertically and five feet horizontally onto an elevated surface. Yeah, we know how far elves can jump. Yep. Okay. Jumping a greater distance feet. requires using ones. the athletic skill. Okay, so you can jump a five-foot gap. That's all it says. That's all it's had to say. Is you can leap over a five-foot gap if your speed is 15 and a 10-foot gap if your speed is 30. There's a lot more. Stuff. Very good. Oh, God. Okay, so you can ready in action. Let's see if this is as fucked as delay. Because you prepare to use an action that will occur outside of your turn. Choose a single action you can use and designate a trigger. Your turn then ends. If the trigger you choose occurs before the start of your next turn, you can use the chosen action as a reaction, provided you still meet the requirements to use it. Okay. If you have the multiple attack penalty and your ready to action is an attack action, your ready to action takes the multiple attack penalty as if you had spent your ready to act attack on your turn. This is one of the few times the multiple attack penalty applies when it's not your turn. For more information on multiple attack penalties, go back three pages. So they only did that so huh. people aren't delaying to get rid of the multiple attack penalty. I could see that. And this also lets you move, you do anything. Yeah. Hmm? For a specified trigger. What is stopping me, because I don't want to take the negative attack penalty, right? Mm-hmm. What is stopping me from moving, shooting with my bow, and then... Because I have a third action that I can't really use. Ready is two actions. There's two diamonds. Oh, there's two. That's so weird. I don't like that. The fact that it's two is a little strange. Hmm. I don't like that. You spend two of your actions to do one thing. Later. So it's two for one. It's not one to one. Hmm. That's the cost of delaying it to a different spot. Hmm. 
But when you move to another spot, does that permanently move your initiative no. to that spot? Okay. That's why it's um, ready okay. instead of So odd delaying. thing, Joe. Just confirming. Yeah. Maybe it's not here, but it doesn't specify that two diamonds is two actions. That's what I was told. Because um, the only time I see it mentioned before Gen this Com. is on 304 on turns where it has, you know, icons for designation. I think I did see it earlier. It might be on... Like real spell. early. Like real I early think. in a weird place. All right. Anyway. I'll find it. Yeah. You can um, keep going. You can take the seek action. Yeah. Page seven, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So not with actions? No, it's you don't with actually basic concepts. Yeah, because the it's, diamonds it's are. Before, it it yeah. comes up a lot during like yeah. the classes and stuff. I understand that being earlier. Okay, um, so you can take the seek action, in which case you look for something. I make a secret perception check for you, and compare the result to the stealth DC of any unseen creatures within the area. You don't roll it. Uh, if your result is greater than the stealth DC of a creature, you sense the creature until it sneaks, or otherwise avoid your detection. See senses on page one. If you're using Seek to search for hidden objects, such as secret doors or hazards, you search up to a 10-foot square adjacent to you. You may need to spend more than one Seek action for larger areas, or the area to be searched is cluttered. If your perception check result equals or exceeds the DC of a hidden object, as determined by the GM or by the character concealing the object, you either learn its location or gain a clue as to its location. Um, so the thing that uh, I find weird about that is... You have to actively look for that. Yeah. Creatures that are stealthing automatically pass. They don't roll against anything on you. Just your passive perception DC. That's it. If you're not actively looking for hidden creatures in a combat, they can sneak up on you. Ooh. I mean, that's fair, yeah. I guess. But pretty specific. The fact that it's a 10-foot square is weird because 5e does the same thing you roll if you're below their or above their passive perception you go hidden yeah. and then you can use your turn like you, yeah, you use your look. action to look for things but that counts as a perception check against everything mm -hmm. within your vision so if something's sneaking up on you and you get higher than their stealth you can see it again right this is a 10 foot square oh, oh no it's better it, if you're scanning for signs of an unseen creature, choose either a 30-foot cone or a 15-foot burst within line of sight. <laughs> if I'm 40 feet away from you, to the left, just a tad, you don't see me. At this point, mm. they're two steps away from doing facing. Yeah. <laughs> it is a 30-foot cone. 30 feet's a pretty short area. I don't know about you guys, but 30 feet's not that far. As soon as you get past that, it's just black walls. Just, yeah. Or just a 15-foot burst. So you only see black walls in bursts of 15 feet. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Could you imagine <laughs> if that's how you actually saw? <laughs> like, you would like, scan around. Like, Dude, I would need so much dream in me. The rest is, like, It would be bad. I don't even know. It's just... It's bizarre. Easy and out of focus. Yeah. It's bizarre that it's so specific. Yeah. If they didn't have the specific things... It's it, whatever. It That's I yeah. would say a cone in a direction. Like, pick a direction you That's look at. That's just facing. Way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for hidden objects, that's all right. Like, I'm looking over here. I'm not looking over here. But this makes it weird because it, it means that if you're a... Um, if you're a... Oh, God, this is so strange to use. It's facing. It's almost facing. That's why I prefer if it's just you roll one thing, it's everything that you can see. There's no reason not to do it. See, this is weird because, oh, God, especially as a GM. So if I'm a GM and my halfling, or I don't know who my rogue, or no. Basically, halfling, no. Halfling. 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 Take offense to that. <laughs> Our halfling is sneaking know. up to some guards. As long as I specify that the guard is not looking in his direction, you don't have to roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so weird. It's facing. <laughs> But I have to keep track of that. Yeah. I don't want to keep track of that. No one does. There's a lot of stuff we have to keep track of. Yeah, the hardness. On a shield. Shield dents. Facing for guards. This is getting out of hand. It's basically <sighs> facing. Oh, man. You're going to go through scrolls. Yeah. I'm going to go through shields. <laughs> and Joe's going to know multiple levels of the same spell. Um, <laughs> We're all fun. 
So uh, the next action is a stand. You stand up from prone. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Get uh, your crawl first. No complaints about that one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, the next one's a little weird for the same reason that crawl is weird. Step. Move. Requirements. Your speed is at least 10 feet. You carefully move five feet. What? It's a five foot step. It's a five foot step. For what? But you have step. to be able to move at least 10 feet to five foot step. Okay. I think their logic there is if you can't move 10 feet, your movement is five feet. So you can't five foot step because that's just your normal movement, so you can't be careful yeah. about it. But they could I understand that logic. That. It seems really weird. And again, something they probably had to do for organized play. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Um, also, you can't step into difficult terrain or greater difficult terrain. That's why they did it. Also oh, fair. because it takes more movement. Yes. Yeah. And it also means fair. that if a creature has a five-foot movement, it essentially ignores difficult terrain. It can't actually affect him because he can only move five feet. Right. Mm -hmm. But a normal character can't move, can't step through difficult terrain. They have to feet. actually move. They have to actually move. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, okay. no, I agree with that. Stride. You move up to your speed. See page 310. Straightforward. Why are you telling me to go to 310 for that? Because that's oh, the entire gosh, movement mind. section. Moving on. <laughs> uh, strike. You attack with a weapon you're wielding with an unarmed attack, targeting one... one. What? Oh, okay. Targeting one creature within your reach for a melee attack or within range for a range attack. Uh, roll the attack roll, blah, blah, blah. If you succeed, you deal damage. If you cr critically success, you deal damage. That was um, see melee strikes and rain strikes on page 17 for details. Because that shouldn't have been in the combat section of the book. You know, not... <laughs> not in a combat Not section. here, 290 pages back. Oh my yep. god. 290 <laughs> pages back. Uh, actually, exactly 290 pages back. <laughs> I did the math. <laughs> you did the math. Um, so, take cover as an action. Okay. You are benefiting from cover or near a feature that allows you to take cover. You press yourself against the wall or duck behind an obstacle to, to take better advantage of cover. If you would, if you would see cover on page three fourteen. Yeah. If you would gain a plus two circumstance bonus AC and reflex saves due to cover, you instead gain a plus four circumstance bonus AC and reflex saves from cover while you're taking cover. Because aren't shields cover? No. No. They're not considered cover. No. Nope. Okay. You can hide behind cover and then raise a shield. Yep. Mm. Both cool. things. But then your shield will probably break. Otherwise, you gain the normal benefits of cover. This lasts until you move from your current space, use an attack action, become unconscious, or end this effect as a free action. What if I fall Triggered between some by rocks? The start of your next turn. So, oh, that's even so stranger. All right, I'm behind a three-foot wall. Yeah. I'm hiding behind it. Yeah. I fall unconscious. I'm easier to hit. Yeah. I'm laying down behind the wall. But you now still get the plus two bonus from the cover. You just don't get the plus four. Hey, as long as you're in light Does and they're in dark. Any bonuses though? Doesn't seem like it. Well, it didn't tell me to go to a page. So. I mean, I <laughs> oh yeah, didn't we go through that last? I'm one gonna go back Graf. to seventeen. Yeah. Like you don't get anything from it. Yeah. So, I've I've got a couple of weird things about this. This could have been solved if it just said you increase the circumstance bonus due to cover by two. Didn't really need to specify all that. Also, so this this effect lasts. Whoa, man! Never mind. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, specialty basic actions and reactions. You can arrest a fall. If you have a fly speed, you can make an ac acrobatics check to not to stop falling. Uh, you fall gently, taking no damage from the fall. We need to see falling on page 310, which is the next page. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, you can take a deep breath. <gasps> That's an action. What? For the record. You ha actually have to tell me that you're holding your breath. I Guys, see that. every turn. That's what I'm doing. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I'm holding my breath. I move. I attack. I take a deep breath. I move. I attack. I take a deep breath. Oh, no. Just now I'm case, manually breathing. Just in case the fire or the water comes. I'm afraid of tsunamis. Uh, <laughs> I am, actually. I so. I mean, I think everyone is. Yeah. <laughs> 30-foot wall, wall of water? Yeah, I'm uh, a little frightened. So, uh, I looked it up. Yeah. The prone condition. Yeah. It gives you a plus one to AC against range attacks. So you are correct. If you go prone behind 
a wall, it's not taking cover, you're just laying flat, you have a plus three bonus instead of the plus four. Maybe so like your correct. foot is hanging out on the edge of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the only way you can justify it. <laughs> so the weird like, part I about this foot. is let's say, for instance, there's a three foot wall between me and you. Mm -hmm. you're, we're fighting with swords. <laughs> we each get a plus two because there's a wall in between us. But if someone bonks me over the head, <laughs> I'm actually easier to hit for you laying down behind uh, a wall. Prone, you get a plus one bonus. But only uh, range no, It's a plus one uh, bonus for the person hitting you. Or, like, a, it's a minus one penalty for you. So you become even easier for a melee person to hit you. <laughs> but you have to take the action to get the advantage of cover. So just just so we know, if we <laughs> the correct way for us to fight behind this wall is to be back to back doing this <laughs> is is for me to attack you, then take cover because it increases it by two. <laughs> Where'd it go? Uh, <laughs> then on your turn is okay. to attack me and then take cover, <laughs> and then we just do. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. Until one of us dies. And, oh my god. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> take uh, your aggression out. So if you take a deep breath, uh, you can go without air at any point before, if you go without air at any point before the start of your next turn, you can use twice as many actions before you start suffocating. We'll go to page 315 for suffocation. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, burrow. You dig your way through dirt, sand, yeah. or similar loose material and rate up to your burrow speed. You can't burrow through rock or other substances denser than dirt unless you have the ability to launch to do so. Okay. Um. <laughs> so apparently Richard has a bird in his house. <laughs> He's just sitting on his monitor. He's from outside. What? He has no idea what. <laughs> He's like, I'm... Life did not prepare me for this. <laughs> Good luck. All right. Fly. If you have a fly speed, you can fly. Yeah, there's a requirement. You have to have a fly speed. Otherwise, you cannot take the fly action. <laughs> Moving upward, straight up or diagonally, counts as traveling through difficult terrain. You can move straight down 10 feet for every 5 feet of movement you spend, or double your movement speed. Just say that. <laughs> No, you're going to do calculations. Just say instead. that. <laughs> Just say. Have you you seen, can move straight down and double your movement have speed. Have you seen the formulas? Of this? They, they, they're doing their best. Guys, we're going to need a whiteboard. I, need a clip. I feel like this is written by programmers trying to write requirements documents. I like, need a clip of Brad saying, Just say that. Just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and when, you're so writing, fucking good. and when you're writing your blog post, you can include the lines and then an embedded link. After Just say that. Right. <laughs> oh, soundboard. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, this is this is uh, Pathfinder 2's uh, playtest. And one thing I want to make clear. Uh, it is a playtest. Yeah. It is a playtest. We're, 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 we're ripping it apart really hard because we care. That's, yeah. You know, all I mean, love. A like. A lot of people on Twitter are like, everyone's being so mean to the playtest. And I'm like, do you know what a playtest is? That's exactly yeah. what it's for. Like, and I feel like a lot of these people came in after the D&D Next one. Like, they started Tabletop with yeah. 5e, so they missed that playtest environment. But it was the same thing. Yeah, D&D &D &D Next was worse. It was, the, like, it was so much. I mean, if you like something, you're, you're going to be like, oh, this is cool, and then you're not going to generally What they originally it, released for D&D Next is nowhere near what 5th edition ended up, ended up being. Yeah. Like, it's totally mm -hmm. different. So, I mean, we're, we're doing it because we want to play it and love it. Wasn't there you know? a point for D&D Next where they released three separate styles of rules I wasn't, at the same time? I didn't get in the playtest for it at the really beginning. Like, I wasn't like, role-playing the mainline system at that point. For spell casting or hit points point. or something, they actually released three separate ways of doing it and was like, vote. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an unintelligent way of no. doing it. Yeah. I mean, it narrowed it down to what the majority of the... Okay. But I, I like this stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you fly to the ground, you don't take falling damage. Makes sense. I hope I'm glad they specified that. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going to go to fall damage on page 315. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. That's suffocation. Oh. Um, falling Same is on thing. 310. Uh, that's the page you're on, isn't you, it? 
you can use no, an action to fly zero feet to hover in place. Yes. Every bird is now a hummingbird. Well, Aww. that's actually really important because you have to expend an action to maintain airborne, otherwise yeah. you fall. Yeah. It is. It's worded really poorly. It doesn't s get that. That's the point of that. It says you may. <laughs> it doesn't tell you the consequence. They're just kind of implied and you have to figure it out. But <laughs> If you're airborne at the end of your turn and don't use a fly action this round, you fall. There you go. <laughs> So at least I got rid of that weird, like, minimum forward movement speed for clumsy maneuverability. I didn't like that. And I hated that. I never used it. I yeah, just, we like, never... Fly. We house ruled a lot of things <laughs> that actually had fly. very clunky rules to begin like, with. Like, I don't think so. I ever was like, JP, you can't do that because you I've have average maneuverability. I've never seen a system with right. you need to actually default do crafting a lot of Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, mount. Requirements. You are adjacent to an allied animal <laughs> companion or to a creature at least one size larger than you that you've controlled using handle and animal. Y'all better be ready. I'm okay. gonna mount the fuck out of all you. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, for the record, according to this, you can mount the mouse as long as it is an allied animal companion because that's an or, <laughs> not, an not an end. Oh, what? It is, you are adjacent <laughs> to an allied animal companion or... A creature at least one size larger than you that you've controlled using the handle and animal action. Can a, can a mouse be an animal companion? I don't see any reason. She has a Should small be. bear. Technically, she can ride her bear by that rule. Yes. I switched it to an owl. So she can ride the owl. She can ride the owl. You can hover. You can hover. There's not. We can Does, stick our food on the owl. Are there rules for this owl? Can it hold you? What is your bonus? Put, put her in a backpack. It'll be fine. It actually has like a bulk of like light or something like that. I don't well, know. It has a bulk of light. Yeah. But yeah. It, can carry. it can carry. So you can light. carry 10 of them. <laughs> yeah. Just put a backpack on it. Yeah. I'm we're a good backpack. Forever. I love it. But I like that. The ore. That's interesting. You are a dick yeah. to so an animal, com allied animal you're going companion. going to mount everything. Or this just got a creature <laughs> larger than you. And it specifically says in the animal companion section that I can't ride them. Yes. Banjo Kazooie Mount. <gasps> yes. 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 <laughs> the owls is having the other way legs. around. Ban I like or, yeah, Banjo is in the backpack. No, Banjo's the bear. Kazooie's the bird. Yeah, Kazooie. So Banjo's in the backpack. Kazooie's the bear. <laughs> that yes. happens sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love Jesus. it. Oh, man. Okay. I also love the wording of. One size larger than you that you've controlled using handle and animal. Yeah, that's what you do. Like I'm excited you to get it. You're to like that. you're mine. <laughs> I'm going to mount you. Can we just can we just house rule that? You control that we we're we're friends. Anything. We're friends. We can't house rule anything. Can we Final change ball. the verbiage? Verbiage. <laughs> the verbiage. <laughs> my French. My French roots, guys. My French coming um. out. My verbiage. <laughs> That I don't control it. That we're friends. Oh, Rachel, it's mutual. This also means. Is your familiar an animal companion? It also it's means. Familiar. It also means that if you have a elephant-sized familiar, you cannot mount it. Yeah. You can I only think mount animals. Familiars have you to be tiny. You can only mount allied animal companions. We draw the line at beast. By raw, familiars have to be tiny. So I couldn't anyway. Right, but if you cast like a large creature on it or whatever for whatever reason, like yeah. if I make it gigantic, you can't get on. Right. If Brad gives us an army of golems that are our friends, we can't run. Oh, oh, wait. You're telling me. Wait, wait, this gets better. Hold on. I have to go look up Animal Companion. Hold on. Or not Animal but, Companion. Handle Animal. But my, I have to look up handle animal. my profession is riding a flying creature. I cannot get on another oh flying God. creature. If it's not my ally? Yeah. What if it's friendly but not my ally? Well, that's if you so, controlled it using the handle. Here's, yeah. here's my favorite part. For handle animal, you can only do it to an animal. Mm -hmm. Right. That right. makes sense. Yeah. Uh. You cannot mount a dragon. By raw. You can't get <laughs> on it. Because you can't handle it using an animal companion, and it's not an allied animal companion. So, oh, that's when weird. designing a fantasy role-playing game... I think dragon uh, mounts are at the top of the list of make sure top that's ten the things top I want to do is ride a goddamn dragon. Every character, regardless of backstory, <laughs> wants to ride a do dragon. Drakes, Drakes all Drakes are beasts. They're dragons. Right? They're beasts. dragons. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're magical beasts. Ours are Wait, dragons. Our dra our Ours Drakes are dragons. Are dragons. Oh, well, you can't. Yeah. You can't get on. That's the gonna be fun. Oh. 
that's you fine. Can't, not only can't you do that, you... Now the real question is, do, do you count against its bulk? Well, Jesus <laughs> Christ, stop. <laughs> like, if you get on a dragon, how many people can... Oh my can God, wait a second. <laughs> Um, do you, okay, so what if you had a magical beast that you wanted to ride, do you take you resonance to get on it? <laughs> or does it have to spend its resonance to let you if, you if you're wearing magical armor. Now, here's a better question. What if your, ma your horse it's animal magical. companion. It's a pegasus, but yeah. Your horse animal companion. We'll say you're, well, you can't mount your pegasus. Yeah, by raw. According to this, you can't mount your pegasus. You're gonna. Bust I'm gonna. So the pegasus it's a magical knights. Beast. <laughs> the pegasus knights are just run <laughs> underneath the pegasuses. <laughs> no, <laughs> they get in their saddlebags. I was about to say, you even have like a basket underneath, like a hot so, air balloon. Oh let's say God. you have a, you have a, a magical, like, a magical saddle. Magical but you saddle. don't pass the resonance to get on the magical saddle. <laughs> 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 You're just like a magnet on top of another it just one. Covers <laughs> awkwardly. This is yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> or this is very comfortable. I should always not have resonance. We're gonna have to roll some stuff here. God, the rules here. in this fucking game. Yeah. Um. Anyway, you get on the mount. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you succeed, you get <laughs> anyway, on the you get on the mount and you ride it. Now, it oh, doesn't specify oh, what riding it means, or anything else. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, those are things you just, you assume. Jesus. Oh, don't you worry, Brad. On page 315, need... they have mounted combat, mounted attack, Here's the and thing. mounted defense. But can't so ride a Pegasus. We, we don't need to describe how you ride an animal, but we need to describe how you talk to another player in the game. With the speech... Dis like, I, yeah, okay. Sh Shima Panda, I 100% agree. Like, everyone around this table is in the tech industry in some. Yeah. Respect. Oh yeah, every single. So like, this 100% yeah. reads like a requirements document for a very <laughs> so detailed application. And like, that I like my job. Didn't think. Through. But when I'm playing my tabletop RPGs, I don't no. want to have to think like I'm at my job. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, just me. Now my question is. If you are mounting a creature, are you adjacent to it? It said you had to be, uh, didn't it? Again, that's probably going to be covered at page 315 when they go over uh, mounted combat, mounted attacks, mounted defenses. Um, mostly because the requirements for using the mount ability, you have to be adjacent to it. Well, how could you get on it if you were but, 10 feet away? <laughs> well, no, that's not the question I'm asking. Acrobatics. If you're already mounted, you can you instead use this action to dismount, moving off the mount and into a space adjacent to it. But the requirements for using the ability require you to be adjacent to it. To dismount? Yeah. Well, technically, I mean, if you're on top That's of a, it, you're technically adjacent statement to it. That you never hit That's the an else. infinite loop where the mount is waiting in place forever. <laughs> Some <laughs> that that's that's buttered toast and a cat. You drop. Oh, oh my God. God. I have four cats if we want to try that. I mean, oh, all right. Nice. So, yeah. point out. <laughs> this is an action. <laughs> what? To point, I have to use an action. Yes. What? You know, there's a Justin right there. You have to use no. an action for that. Seriously? Wait. Yes. I was gonna say that would be so two you know how actions. You have to look for for things like if I your... spot something and I right. yell, there is a. It Goblin. alleviates it alleviates us from all having to use an action to view that same fifteen foot square by oh after seeing God. it, you'd be like, There <gasps> as an action. And then you but all see oh it. If you had to roll that perception check during your turn, that so would be two, two actions. <laughs> Why can't I just freely say there's a goblin over there? There's oh. a goblin behind the barrel. You can say it. I can. can. You can. I'm allowed to say that. But if you, you choose you, the you point. Can. But we but can't it, see it. Keep your fingers <laughs> down, Justin. <laughs> but they don't get... There's a goblin still, behind the barrel. It still <laughs> remains unseen to the party until Bullshit. they sense it. <laughs> Again, that feels like it's very geared towards the organized play yeah. groups, where one person sees something, then everybody attacks it. Like, when they're very rule stickly. So. That does happen a lot, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if, I am, if it's freeform and, like... I'm like, oh, look, there's a dog behind the bush. IRL, you generally can just, that's, like, look at the bush. That's I don't trust you. And it doesn't I have to take, see it. It depends how many bushes there are. No, right. I don't need to see it. She needed to have used an action for me to see it. She said it. I don't believe it. Yeah. The talk is free, me. but allowing you to see it cost me something. <laughs> that's what I don't get. Rachel. That's what I don't get. <laughs> there's what is not the a bush there. pointing and saying it from the other character's point of view? 
That like, is a little weird. Why do to you raise an arm and go like this? But why do I need to? It's an action. But you're saying an there's a justin like, at the end I of the table isn't. Don't forget if he's in light, he gets concealment against your attack. Okay, so <laughs> here's my thing. Only right? if you're in the dark. Here's yeah, my thing. Yeah, you're in the dark. Here's my thing. So if I'm like, if I see that there is a goblin behind the barrel, and I'm like, oh, there's a goblin behind the barrel, you still will probably have to find it yourself on your own turn. So it costing me an action to point out when if there's no tangible benefit to the other players, right? So it just costs you an action to do it. No, no there probably is a go tangible look. benefit. Oh, is there? The tangible benefit is that they become sensed rather than unseen. Which is a trait for perception. There stuff. is too much happening here. There but are why can I just a lot of. It's over there. I groups. sense it's there now. Why do you need to spend an action for me? Because 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 you're speaking. I don't know if you're using the lie action or the point out action. Oh stop! You didn't specify. Those so aren't actually your turn. <laughs> yeah, but I trust. <laughs> like, if my ally says there's a goblin behind the barrel. And I'm not, uh, say I'm not my looking point is at like, them, Joe's right? Have I'm to not look looking anyway. at my ally. So if I'm they say that, that, that there's a goblin behind the barrel, I don't believe them. I'm, I don't sense there's a goblin back there. If they point at it, I can't see. Not looking that way. There's a goblin behind that barrel. I have a sense it now. That's like, true. That's it's true. That's what true. The fuck yeah. changes? I, so if I say it, you don't believe me, but the second right. I raise this finger, as you long as sense you raise it. Your finger. You sense oh, it. There's, there's a magic in these hands. That gets better. Resonance. If your allies cannot hear or understand you, <laughs> they must succeed at a perception check against the target's stealthy seer, or, or, or they misunderstand the distance to the target and believe it to be in a different location. You get That's to point out a creature, and they don't even have to understand. Yeah, I can just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, they, don't just, you, they don't have to see or understand you, so that you can just go, ah! <laughs> everyone gets to roll perception. <laughs> But normally, it's a seek action on their turn, and they have to guess. Um, and, and again, that's more effective than me just telling you something's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by raw, me just screaming abstract words. No, not even to, words. There's goblin behind the red barrel. It's more effective. Uh. <laughs> Way more effective. Wait, no, you have to put your arms down. It's just, ah. Yeah. Like, um. You love combat. <laughs> Why? It's all this yelling and grunting of combat. And everyone just here. Ugh. But look. So here's the part about this that bothers me. Why? Oh no! And it says, so this is the part that bothers me. Yeah. If your allies can't hear or understand you, we all know that's weird. Yeah. yeah. They must succeed at a perception check. Which but when, it doesn't tell them to take one. When do they get to make it? Yeah, that was my next question. question. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't yeah. tell you. Well, that's important because if it's on my turn, because, I have to use an action. Because yeah. they have yeah. to make it, or they misunderstand the distance of the target and believe it to be in a different location. <laughs> so if which don't, is even weirder. That's even because that means that I have to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you think it's on the green barrel. Andrea, you think it's on Pluto. Rachel, you're not even in the city right now. <laughs> There's the <laughs> Ashley, there. you see it. Right. I'm pointing. Yeah. But right. it's an orc. So, like, <laughs> Ashley, Ashley's the one who initially sees it. She tries to communicate it. We uh. fail. <laughs> The mini is here, because Ashley saw it. Brad's like, Joe, you think it's here. <laughs> Andrew, you think it's here. That's so much Display to keep track of. Yes! Like, Why would, she has to keep track of her shield. And it doesn't tell you and that they have to roll now. This doesn't work with a tactical role-playing game like combat system. I sure am glad we're <laughs> getting more Aaliyah to have, tools. Because like, sure. we're going to need like, to keep where we yeah. think things are on the map. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyone that is male has a wife and hears her scream in the kitchen. We know they've seen a spider, so he automatically knows there's a spider in the kitchen. <laughs> see, <laughs> like see, normally that. Yes. that would be accurate. <laughs> yeah. Except Rachel does this shit to me all the time. <laughs> where she just yells, and then four <laughs> seconds later, because I don't Same. respond, I've learned, she goes, Brad, come in here and look at this. It's so cute. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> You're Dude. mean to me. <laughs> we get our Lucas plushie soon. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. I didn't oh my exactly God. scream. So the point out action Ooh. contradicts the seek action entirely. My, fa but when do you make that perception roll? And you're forced to make it. I can't be like I don't even want to look for it. I either have to Ugh. pass or fail it. I yes, and if you it. fail it, then I have to tell you that you're wrong. So if Ashley screeches, I could be inherently penalized just on. If you have to take an action Every for it, but it's not in there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With your third Triggered. action. Yeah. You no, I can freely speak. It's fine. Just screeching. Just but uh, to point it out, it's an action, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I have an extra action on my turn because it's pointless to raise the shield. I mean, it's just gonna be yeah. Yeah. well, we'll find out in about two seconds because that's up next. Okay, so th the requirements yeah, for this are even weirder. 
The requirements for point out are a creature is not unseen by you, but is unseen by one or more of your allies. Then it goes on to say that you indicate that a creature that you can see to one or more of your allies. Note that it does not say the ones that can't see it. So if you already see it, could you get you by wrong? By wrong. You can get by confused. The way that this is you can written, get confused. If if Ashley can see it and JP can see it and nobody dragon. else can, and over Ashley there? goes, "There's a dragon <laughs> over there," and he fails because I can make him roll. She could not see it there all of a sudden. Yes. Oh, it disappeared. Oh. Where'd it go? Oh wow. Well. Oh. oh ah. I'm over there now. Sorry, guys, I ate something weird for breakfast. <laughs> oh, it's over there. <laughs> Wait, does that fit in six seconds? She gets to pick who gets affected. I, that's what I was about to say. It says, it, it's the way it's worded is you get to pick, so I could, like, fuck with people. Like, Steve's right next to me, right? And you just screech. But I'm just like, Rachel, this guy over there. And Steve's just like, I didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, that is so weird. That was only, that was yeah. only meant for Rachel. It's really the most... Uh, Fur infuriating part is that they don't specify when the perception check is made or if you yeah. get yeah. one. Because yeah. that's what needs defining. Or, or even, Cause if it, if even it's on your who turn, makes it. Picks it. Up an action, that's not a lot of the time so far weird. is that I get to make your perception checks against hidden objects, which is fine because mm -hmm. I know the DCs. Yeah. Right. But in this case, you get to roll, but it doesn't say you get to roll. And or or you have it. to make one. Or this when. was made before that d rule was yeah. determined. And never changed, or vice versa. There's a lot. I close my eyes so not to be confused. <laughs> I already know where it's at. I don't want to look again. <laughs> I believe it. All right, so let's let's talk about raising a shield. Yep. Uh, requirements: you have to be wielding a shield. Wow. Oh, check. Uh, define shield. It doesn't. Uh, you you position your shield <laughs> to protect yourself <laughs> when you have to when you have a when wait. You Brad Lott is something there. You oh, What? Define a shield. The game never tells you what a shield is. Yeah, it tells you what a shield item is, but I could hold a table up as a shield. Mm -hmm. I raise my shield. As long as the bulk is... Okay. No, I'm raising my shield. I'm as long as the bulk is equal to or less than your wrist. But what is the hardness <laughs> of paper towels? Doesn't matter. What? I'm still getting an AC bonus. What is it? Maybe. Now? No, you get the AC no. bonus. Oh, you do. It's yeah. just that's going to When dent. you have raised the <laughs> shield, you're, you're going to dent my paper towels, but I still get the AC bonus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ver like no, it's that's dent actually accurate. Yeah. Each shield though has its own AC bonus. So what, AC so, bonus. so what is so the AC bonus for paper towels? He would get an AC bonus. Determine. He would get the damage reduction bonus from paper towels. Should I get damage reduction. Well, that's that's for the next action, Brad. I didn't that's even for read. Block. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Raise a shield just gives you the AC yeah. bonus from the right. shield. So he has to use two actions. He has to raise the shield, then use, use your action, block. and then, then your reaction is shield. Reaction block. is shield. I fucking hate this game. Uh, you gain its listed bonuses to AC and touch AC as circumstance bonuses, and you can use a shield block reaction. Your shield remains raised until starting your next turn. Why does shield prevent touch attacks? Because this. Cause, cause, how, how's <coughs> Joe gonna touch me? You're not touching Can't me. Can't touch this. Well, most touch attacks are like, like disintegrate or like, like electrification. But I have a wooden shield. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked, Fuck. Brad. <laughs> Foiled again. <laughs> you win this one, Wood. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh actually. my god. Let's go to the shield block action. This Trigger. Is yeah, this I is am. too much shit to keep track of. I'm sorry. <laughs> we've, we've spent three days of D and D going over these rules. Yeah. <laughs> Can we play I was hoping we would <laughs> get to combat, but I don't. That's not. Uh, gonna I don't think we are. No, that's We're not, not even tonight. Out of Maybe Saturday. <laughs> we haven't even gotten a movement. <laughs> Um, well, I've forgotten half of this anyway, so we're just gonna have to. I say we just jump in, seat of our pants. I would, I would no, say we you... finish this section, yeah, like the playing the game section, yeah, and then we're, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we could probably play. We need to. Uh, we don't yeah. have to go to special abilities or exploration mode or downtime or conditions. Yeah, so I need to explore. To right. Conditions will come up when they come up. Uh, so oh, you yeah. use shield block to deflect a blow. Your shield prevents you from taking an amount of damage equal to its hardness. The shield takes its damage instead. Possibly becoming dented or broken. Why well, would I want to keep track of those rules? Who knows? Moving on. I mean, that's good because I could reduce my damage taken by nine twice. How about we just not make shields give you damage reduction and treat them like we always did, where they just gave you a static bonus AC? Because I have to use two actions to use that as my reaction. 
Wait, I have to use it as an action and a reaction. You use, yeah, it'd be your action and your reaction. But I have a special reaction, so no. No. Okay, so... Yeah, but that's um, if it hits somebody else. Um, only get one movement, reaction. not much has changed here. Uh, yeah, movement's about the same. It's pretty much identical to what it was. Except There's, we're all slower. I didn't, yeah, you're all five feet slower for some reason. The world got heavier. I don't know. Why 25? It's such a weird number. 30? I like, can only go 20. That's because you're a dwarf. I have short um, legs. Technically, you got five feet. You also get uh, resonance. Page direct. 311, they specify that diagonal movement is one and a half. Oh, and finally. Two. They do specify that on page But one, you will notice that it's for grid movement, not grid range. So my arrows can go in that direction, but I can't. No, like, that's that's the part about range that they didn't specify earlier on when they did like the bubbles of how the you, burst. Because you know yeah. how diagonals are. It's like yeah. one, ten, mid, one, fifteen, twenty, like 30. five, fifteen. Every other one is two. Yeah. To sim okay. symbolize diagonals, they specify it for movement. For range, they do not write that out for you. So range, you have no idea how to shoot diagonal accurately. Yeah, they, they actually don't tell you how range works. At least, <coughs> not that I can see. You shoot everything. Cover, screening, uh, mounted die, combat, die, die. exploration okay, mode. Nope, they never go over range. Uh, we'll just go to falling, because... Uh, actually, no, swim speed is important. With a swim speed, you can propel yourself through the water with limited little impediment. Instead of rolling athletics checks to swim, you automatically succeed. That's it. Moving on. Oh, <laughs> you get a plus four bonus athletic checks to swim. But it just told me I didn't have to. Oh, hazardous condition. Okay. Uh, falling. When you fall more than five feet, you take bludgeoning damage. Okay. When you land equal to half the distance you fell. So you oh, fall 20 feet? Holy shit. This you take 10 damage. This is real bad. What? When you fall more than five feet, you take bludgeoning damage when you land equal to half the distance you fell. If you, so you fell 20 feet, you, you take, take 10, 10 damage. damage flat. No rolling. You fall 300 feet, you take 150 damage. Like yep. 150 damage. So don't fall. Treat falls longer than 1,500 feet as though they were 1,500 feet. Terminal velocity. Yeah. If you take any damage from a fall, you're not prone when you land. You can grab an edge as a reaction, using the acrobatic skill to reduce the damage from some other falls. In addition, when you fall into water, snow, or other relatively soft dis substance, you treat the fall as though it was 20 feet shorter. Assassin's Creed taught me otherwise. Uh, 30 feet shorter if you intentionally dove in. So, if there is a, a giant thing of hay and you dive in, it's 30 feet shorter than if you just fell and like belly flopped. What if you're swimming and you dive 50 feet, you still take 10 damage? But you're not falling. You're, oh. You chose to dive. Guess we're out of synchronized swimming, guys. Dang it. This <laughs> effective reduction can't be greater than a depth. So when falling into 10 feet of water, you treat the fall as 10 feet shorter. Okay. So if you dove into 50 feet of water, it would be 50 less damage. No, just 30. No? Oh, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Which also doesn't make sense. Because I don't know if you know this, but... Uh, like a human doesn't dive thirty feet. Like, like you physically when you jump you in, physically you physically can't do that. That's you might break your legs if you land wrong. Yeah. But right, but like, like the viscosity of the water. You yeah, you're yeah. you're not going to get thirty, 30 feet down. Feet. I mean, um, it, it is like yeah. a, falling on yeah. a creature. If you land on a creature, the creature must attempt a DC 15 reflex save, which after level five will automatically pass. On a success, it takes bludgeoning damage. What? Be like diving in a jello, you know, like you're not gonna what? get very far. Yeah. Oh, on a success, it takes bludgeoning damage equal to one quarter of the falling damage you took. On a critical success, it's no damage. On a failure, it takes equal to half the damage you took. And on a critical failure, it takes the same amount of damage you took. That's written so poorly. Whoa. It really is. It's a giant run on sentence. Yep. Um, That's that one entire one. block is two sentences. Yep. The if you land on a creature, they have to make a DC 15 yeah. reflex save. Done. The rest of that is one sentence. Nice. I would have a field day. Mm -hmm. There's no, like you eight commas in this sentence, but it's one sentence. Simple. Um, uh, Tico mentioned that if you're immune to bludgeoning damage, you're, you're immune, immune to fall. fall. Yeah. Wow. Can you <coughs> get immune to bludgeoning damage? Can Probably. I play a super Probably ball? gear. <laughs> you would be like a... Oh, that'd be there are creatures. 
Yeah. Because that would be my main method of attack. I would literally yeah. be a wizard with that and cast jump on myself and just go. Whoosh. No, fly. <laughs> fly with Sar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That it deals static damage. It's Kirby using his beat down move. Yeah. Yes. It is static damage. <laughs> Especially if you know how much HP this thing has. Mm -hmm. Metagaming. You could just belly flop on it. Uh, dropped <laughs> objects take damage just like a falling creature. That Hardness. makes no sense. Uh, if it lands on a creature, the creature <laughs> must attempt a <laughs> reflex save using the same rules as a creature falling on a creature. Can it dodge you? What a shield! Out of a window! No! <laughs> 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 like fiddle jokingly takes my shield and like throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me twenty silver, damn it. Could could you what? shield block a fall? But your shield will shatter. Yeah. <laughs> but you're not dead. Is falling considered? Does it a take all the damage? Attack? No. Okay. Yeah, the it just ground takes its hardness. Is attacking. Got it. Yeah. Is the ground attacking you? Nine point eight meters per second squared. Um. If it lands on a creature, the creature can attempt a DC a reflex save using the same rules as a creature falling on a creature. Uh, hazards and spells that involve falling objects, such as rock slide, have their own rules for how they interact with creatures and the damage you deal. For the record, that means, holy shit, I can I can kill you with feathers. I can drop a single feather on you from fifteen hundred feet up, and it will deal seven hundred and fifty damage when it hits you. Why doesn't rain kill us? You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Hail! It's, it takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> it don't go outside. You're dead. <laughs> Everything just takes 750 damage immediately. From so hell. I'm flying on my <laughs> Pegasus. <raids> the city. <laughs> okay, I'm the flying on my Pegasus that Pegasus. I can't fly on, but I'm flying on it anyway. Hardness that you specifies can't for structures. Flying on nothing Pegasus is over 30. You can't mount. <laughs> I can get it. I'm in my Pegasus backpack. Yeah. And South we're back. flying. Yeah. And. It just starts to shed, and all the feathers start falling. Yeah. And you you I just start everyone. killing a bunch of children. <laughs> all right, no. The hardness is mentioned not only for items, but for structures. <laughs> By raw, all these buildings are coming down. By my feathers. Because hardness for structures, it's only marginally higher than, like, items and shit, so you can, like, knock down doors and stuff. That's beautiful. I love it. I don't... It. I don't this <laughs> So I want to what if it. a this is gross? What if a bird poops on you? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, that. first of all, Horse falling objects should have a specification of like the object has to weigh more than like so many x pounds. That's all. Two ball. Yeah. That yeah. solves everything. Two yeah, two ball. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be at least one ball. <laughs> <laughs> if I drop a backpack on you, you'll live. But if it's filled with gold coins, you'll die. <laughs> a feather will kill me. A backpack full of coins will not. This is true. Well, I guess oh, it would still be. Put it on as it. Falls. It would still be the same weight as the feather, though. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Flock of pigeons officially the strongest monster. <laughs> Shit, people are pooping on me. I'm dead. All right. Uh, it's funny because like I get what what they did and, and the way they did these yeah. rules, but they didn't talk. You can tell there wasn't like these discussions happening because I. <laughs> it was probably right, like. So here's the here's the problem that I have is that in certain areas of this they got really really specific for how things work. And then other areas, they just Fucking gloss over. Reading your lips. Section. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like basically a chapter about reading lips. What? Yeah. But if I From drop all the abilities a rock on you. You die. You die. A pebble. A pebble. Like, a little pebble. It's sand. You drop sand. <laughs> sand. Every particle of sand deals <laughs> 750 damage to you. Can you imagine a tornado? At the <laughs> storm? Pocket <laughs> sand is the strongest. Tornadoes <laughs> deal no damage. Because the objects aren't falling. They're moving sideways. Well, when the tornado <laughs> stops, they fall. Yeah, then sideways. everything dies. Moving yeah. sideways is just falling. Like, it's just no it's just It's falling with style. <laughs> falling horizontally. Dropping a cow from the sky and dropping a piece of grass from the sky deal the same damage. Yep. <laughs> also, for the record, they should also, like, change how much falling damage a creature takes depending on its size. Because um, bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, that Shut and, up. And, and mice don't have terminal velocities; they'll always live, regardless of the height you drop them from. Like, tons of animals are like that, mm -hmm. as long as they're under a certain weight limit. Bigger they are, the harder they fall. That joke is cringy for a reason. <laughs> so anyway, moving 
movement is just movement. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, except for yeah. grid movement, which is 1, 10, 1, 10, for diagonals. 5, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10. Um, moving through a creature's space. You can move through a willing creature's space. Okay. If you want to move through an unwilling creature's space, you have to either attempt an athletics check to shove it out of the way, or tumble through that creature's space using the acrobatic skill. You can't end your movement in a square occupied by another creature, so you can immediately end a move action in its square, provided you immediately use another move action to leave that square. If two creatures end up in the same square by accident, the GM determines which one is forced out of the square. That's weird. So follow these rules, but if you don't, GM, GM decides. will figure it out. <laughs> prone and incapacitated creatures. You can share a space with a prone creature if that creature is willing, unconscious, or dead, and is your size or smaller. Huh. Wait. What? The GM might allow you to climb atop a corpse or unconscious body of a larger creature in some situations. A prone creature can't stand up while someone else occupies its space, but it can crawl to a space where it's unable to stand, Maybe. or it can attempt to shove the other creature out So of what the you're way. telling me, mm -hmm. this is all I'm get gathering from this, is in combat now, <laughs> if we kill something, I can't remove the mini from the board, I have to leave it there sideways. Yes. Making sure. Because oh. all that matters. Um, also, especially if it's large size. If it's large size, leave it on the board. Because that actually requires like a climb action. You've got to climb over the fat Also, body. for the record, um, so no Final Fantasy it, it mentions that nothing. you can move through a willing creature's space. Right. What if that willing creature is a intelligent gelatinous cube that takes up a 10 foot by 10 foot block? You can move through it. But you take acid damage when you're inside of it. You politely ask it to suck in its jelly, and you slide around. <laughs> it just goes, <laughs> it makes a tunnel for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a person's size hole, and you just... Oh, my God. Also, you can shove people while you're prone. Just saying. <laughs> they just said that. I love that. But you can only move five The feet. pile of dead bards is not actually an obstacle. <laughs> is now actually an obstacle. Uh, creatures of different sizes, in most cases you can move through a space of a creature at least three sizes larger than you. This means a medium creature can move through the space of a gargantuan creature, and a small creature can move through the space <sighs> of a huge creature. Likewise, uh, did they explain sizes anywhere? Nope. Oh, no, that's all the way over here on the next page. Um, likewise, I feel like that should be at the beginning. It should be. Uh, likewise, a bigger creature can move through the space of a creature three times smaller than itself. You still can't end your movement in a space occupied by a significantly larger or smaller creature. Tiny creatures are an exception. They can move through any creature spaces and can even end their movement there. See page 313 for more information on tiny creatures. That's literally the next page. It, I can see it, actually. Just <laughs> There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Objects. Because objects aren't as mobile as creatures, they're more <laughs> likely to fill a space. <laughs> Fucking really! <laughs> This means you can't always move through object? their spaces the same way you might move through a space occupied by a creature. Huh. I've learned so much about life. <laughs> you might be able to occupy the same square as a statue of your size, but not a wide column. The GM determines whether you can move through an object square normally, or can squeeze through a space, or are unable to move through to that square at all. So now we have to add an, an, a notation to all maps that we make, whether a medium-sized creature can move through it, or if it's difficult terrain. Or blocks. Uh, there's difficult terrain. It costs twice as much. Uh, hazardous terrain deals damage to you. I don't know why they specified that. Like, no fucking shit in acid pools is going to deal damage to me. The hallway's on fire. I'm fine. I didn't say any rules about higher fire things. Narrow Door surfaces, nice. you can use balance to get across. Uneven ground, same thing to not fall or prone and possibly injure yourself. Still shove people. Incline. If an a area is so steep that you need to climb using athletic skill in order to climb it, you're flat footed while climbing an incline. Okie dokie. Mm. That seems important for combat. Flat footed is very important to combat. Yeah. Because yeah. everything makes you flat footed. Don't fight anything on hills. Because they have You the underestimate ground. my power. Yeah. We can get above them and jump on I them. I have now. a high ground pedic. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go, I was going to go in the space and reach, but it works the same way, except the numbers are off. About it. Um, 
flanking. Oh, That's flanking. Yeah. When you and an ally are on opposite sides of an enemy, you're flanking that enemy. While the enemy is flanked, it's flat-footed to the creatures who are flanking it. To flank a foe, you and your ally must be on opposite sides or opposite corners of the creature. A line drawn between the center of your space and the center of your ally's space must pass through either... I hate that. I like the way 5e does it. Hmm. Both you and the ally have to be threatening that enemy. This means that you both must be wielding weapons and ready to make unarmed attacks and not under any effects to prevent you from making attacks. For the record, that means that a wizard with her hands in her pockets is not threatening. <laughs> or wielding wands. Or like if you're with someone who's dazed or something and they can't take an, if they're an action, does that mean that they're not... They're not threatening. Also, if a wizard is, has a scroll in one hand and a wand in the other, it's not considered a threatening. Or if flanking. a cleric has a holy symbol and a shield, it's not threatening. Oh, that's how I'm... I'm never threatening. Great. Cool, I'm never flanking. Yeah. This is weird. Because I don't wield... To be fair, all flanking does is make them flat-footed. Yeah. It can make me hit them whenever I have a negative 10. Maybe. I... So probably not. All right. I want to track... I should, like, set something up for this. Whenever we do do combat. <laughs> Dude. Mm. I want to try and track statistics. I don't know mm. how best to do that. Mm. Don't. You can watch mm. the bots after, too, and, like... Mm. Do some hard for the combat. And That's actually pretty true. Pull mm -hmm. it out after. Yeah. How That's many times do I have to open this book to figure out how to climb? Just, just how many is too many? One. How, one. how many dents we have to keep track of? That two. should be number two. one. Well, yeah, Each but how many times to... is somebody going to forget that they had a dent? How do you repair a dent? You, you don't. don't. You just get a new... How am I going to repair, like, a wooden shield? I'm assuming if it's, like, a nice well, you shield. Out, like, like, you, <laughs> you take it to your side. good old shield mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's a nice shield, probably, but if it's just, like, my 20 silver steel shield... There was a joke about a um, dungeons yeah. being littered with legendary shields <laughs> that just aren't useful anymore. Seriously, like, that was, <laughs> this like... Is too I, mean, yeah. I can't use this. That was, like, a tweet. But see, like, I feel like they did that because you have to... Pay two gold per By Pathfinder whatever. Rules. So now I have My to car's just broken. I can't use. <laughs> you just get out. I have to say though, carrying around extra paper is a lot easier than carrying around extra shields. Yeah. Are you sure? I mean, she can't use it. She just put the, the shields in the backpack. They don't bulk. Oh my gosh! Sure. Can you make a paper shield, an origami shield? Probably. I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. Be like, I can make you one. I'm washing. <gasps> oh. I don't see why not. Yes. There you go, Ashley. You're just going to have origami shields. Yes. And they'll get dented. <laughs> but they'll still grant you AC. <laughs> as long as it gives me plus two AC. So, um... What would the hardness be? When you are behind a wall or some other hard surface that could potentially block weapons and other effects, you are behind cover. If you are behind cover, you can gain a plus two re circumstance bonus to AC as well as your reflex saving zeros against area effects. Then it you can increase this bonus plus four by taking cover. A creature with cover can attempt to use a stealth to conceal its presence with a hide action. To determine whether a target has cover from an attack, this is the part that I was waiting for, the attacking creature or object draws the line from the center of its space to the center of the target space. If that line passes through any blocking terrain, the target is covered. This cover grants that creature plus two circumstances bonus to AC against the attack. You literally just said that four sentences ago. When cover might benefit a creature attempting a reflex standard against an area effect, draw a line for... Oh my god, please. <laughs> the game master might determine that a creature does not have cover if the blocking terrain is not significantly large. For instance, a huge dragon probably wouldn't receive any benefit from hiding behind a one-foot diameter pillar, as most of its body could easily be targeted. Cover from large creatures. If a creature between you and the target is two or more size two categories or more. larger than you, and your target... That creature's entire space is considered blocking terrain for the purpose of determining cover. If there's an elephant between me and Joe, I can't shoot at Joe. Even though the elephant is up here and I can shoot through his legs. Well, elephant... Elephant's huge? Huge. No. Uh, screening. When you're attempting a range attack or a melee attack against a non-adjacent target, the creature, the target must might be screened from you if another creature is between you. What? That sentence doesn't read correctly. When attempting a ranged attack or a melee attack against a non-adjacent target, like with a spear, your, your target, target might be screened, screened from you if another, if creature, another creature is between, is between you. you. Hmm. What? Between okay. you both? Between you and the, the target? targeting creature? 
Not sure what they were going for for that. Uh, if you must, if you must attack or shoot through a space of a creature that's <laughs> if <one> you must, <laughs> if it suits your fancy. How about just if you floats attack, your boat? Yeah. If you attack or shoot through the space of a creature that's one size smaller than you or larger, your target is screened for, from you and gains a plus one circumstance bonus to AC against your attack. This is hard. Hmm. Unlike cover and concealed <laughs> condition, being screened doesn't allow a creature to attempt to hide. So for the record, it no longer matters if that creature is an ally or not. If Joe... So you can't shoot through your enemy's spaces? You can, but they get a bonus. Yeah. That sucks. You can't shoot through your ally's spaces. That, that's what I meant to say. So if Joe... Is standing our halfling. I can't imagine standing between link. Ashley, our human, and the dwarf. dwarf. Yeah. Or no, a giant. I can't hit over his head. You can, but he take he, you take a he gets a plus one. <sighs> That's just more shit to keep track of too. Weird. Because it's one size smaller than you or larger. But if he. Sorry. Wait, giants are large. Right? Okay. And if he tried to hit over the halfling to hit me, the same thing would happen. No. He would not have the problem. Wow, he's bigger that's than rude. He's, 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 one, he's two size categories larger than Joe. But if, but if the opposite were true, if he was trying to attack Joe over, over you, me, Joe would get a plus one. That's silly. That sucks for me. It could be a colossal creature. And if Joe is standing between you and it, he gets a plus one. To illustrate, this is what Brad's talking about. Yeah. Ashley, me, big thing. You get negative, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, actually, that even functions if Ashley is 300 feet away and shooting a bow. Yeah, you can bring her back. It does because it's from the center to the center. Yep. So technically your arrow can't swoop around it. It's got to be I a feel, line, right? Yeah. I feel like at that, though, like I would be shooting up. Like, yeah, right. would your arrow... Even if you were adjacent, you'd still be stabbing up. Like, I feel like it would be Joe's harder... Like your waist height. Like, he's four feet tall. It would be easier for uh, me to hit the big thing uh, than for it to like hit this. me through him because we're yeah. closer I'm in like size. Dusty, I'm right. like three foot That's something. Weird. That's silly. Well, and, and like, for me, I'm just like shooting, you know, a, a ray of whatever... Just don't line yourself up with someone. Fuck. I like like magic missile. Well, magic missile always hits. Yeah, but. Um, do you guys want to go over suffocating you know I mean. and drowning? No. Nope. Uh, not really. Okay. Um, you can fix shields by crafting downtime. But I didn't take crafting because wasn't there like weird stuff with crafting? It's like use resonance or something. It's weird for magical items. Oh, but... they fucked this up. Really? I can JP, fix your shield at least. What's your constitution score? Yeah? Yeah. That's the wrong sheet. Score or modifier? Score. 14. You can hold your breath for five rounds. That's all? That's it. <laughs> and then you start suffocating. Oh. 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my god. That's not very heroic at all. I can hold my breath longer than 30 seconds. Yeah. Wait, with what score? 14. That's above but average. How do you Mine's calculate 12. it? Most people die. You can in 20 hold seconds. your breath for a number of actions. Okay. okay. Equal to your constitution score. You have to spend three actions around. My con score to is hold 12. Your breath. So, so my con score is 12. So four that's rounds. four rounds. Four rounds. So you and me can do 24 seconds. And, we start, and then we start suffocating. Oh my god. That's, no. that's very Don't under. Get the timer. When you chug a beer, it's longer Ready? than that. Ready? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, gotta get it open. One, two, three, go. <gasps> Just like, let it out deeply whenever you do. Everyone at the table with me is holding their breath right now to see how many rounds they last. Currently, we still have very low con scores, but I have a feeling you guys are gonna get to go. These are just fun things you'll experience while watching Star Called Studios. So if you're not already, you should follow. Join Discord. What? Who let out? No, we suffocated. Oh, you did? Yeah, we yeah, you suffocated. suffocated. That's what I, I thought we were... Yeah. I'm just seeing how long they can hold their breath. Oh, yeah. Are you guys still holding? I'm just done. tell me when. I passed out. I suffocated. Done. 
Uh, about 43 seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm dying. 46 <laughs> seconds. Joe's just hanging in there like champ. Uh, you almost made me laugh. I was going to die. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> yeah. You still holding? <laughs> uh, about 57. I, could, I, I can definitely hold my breath longer. Joe, you have a constitution score of like... Yeah. A lot. Damn, man. Mini health. Doing quiet and back I'm not in a high school. Cleric of like, you know, I haven't trained in the clergy and exercise. I don't exercise at all. I get winded walking up the stairs. <laughs> oh, oh, it actually gets no better offense, than Rachel. This. Yeah. No, be yeah, triggered. If you do anything, it you lose two actions worth of air, not just one. Oh my god! If you swim, if you if you attack, if you move, those what? count as two. You so, die against your total. So you can swim with your head underwater for like but 12 seconds. holding your breath Tops. is an action. Remember that, too. Yes. Do you begin drowning if you don't hold your breath? No. That makes zero sense because, like Rachel's saying, there was a specific action for to holding your take breath. a yeah. breath and like hold it. If but you take here, you have to breath, hold it for three. Oh, if you take a deep breath, it's double your constitution. But still, but still, but still, do I start drowning when I stop holding my breath? Uh, when you run out of air, you fall unconscious and start suffocating. Oh, immediately. So it takes two rounds of air every time you do an action that isn't holding your breath, and holding your breath, you need to do three consecutive actions. Mm hmm. Better use your hero point. <laughs> but what if I don't so, use um, my actions? Lesson. Then a, then each action don't go passes, swimming. counts as one. So if you... No, if but you, it says I have to use an action to hold my breath, but I you lose air to, to do anything else. If I do nothing... No, each action <laughs> that passes during your turn costs Got you it. one action worth of air, even if you do nothing with that action. Okay, so, so it, does say like it. Yeah. Okay. it does Keep say Keep in it. mind, though, that you don't have to make swim checks. So, even me, the small little halfling, if I'm 75 feet below water, since even though I can only hold my breath for four rounds, I only need one round to swim 75 feet straight up and get air. Just to let you know, the average human <laughs> swims at a speed of roughly about three feet a second, which is not fast. Yeah. Fiddle is Michael Phelps. <laughs> Um, you need to. It's like, I gotta swim, I gotta breathe. Keep in mind that each time you take an ac at attack or ma manipulate action, you lose two actions worth of air instead of one. You also lose two actions worth of air each time you get hit by an attack. So if you're getting. Uh, if you're fighting underwater, you're just. And fucked. verbal actions cost you all of your remaining air. Don't fight a kraken. So casters are fucked in water. Yep. Or well, I mean, they like, would be anyway. This seems like the easiest way to kill like your party. Don't get your wizard wet. <laughs> it's work. like gremlins. Yeah. <laughs> don't get them wet. Don't feed them after midnight. Sorry, Rachel. Yeah, it's okay. While suffocating, you can't recover from being unconscious, and you must attempt DC 20 fortitude save at the end of each of your turns. On a failure, you take 1d10 points of damage, and on a critical failure, you die. Oh, cool. Can Not gain the dying condition. No, just, just die. On each check after the first, DC increases by 5, and the damage by 1d10. The increases are cumulative. That seems hard. Once your access to air is restored, you stop suffocating and are no longer unconscious. This seems, like, really harsh, because, like, drowning is one of those things they can bring you back from. Often, actually. Yeah. Pretty so reliably. Yeah. yeah. But nope. <laughs> nope. Four... 20 seconds, dead. Dead. So, don't go near bodies of water, got it. <laughs> Actually, I think JP's first Vassar would have died. Don't take a bath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rizia yeah. would have died. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had a, you did a puzzle whenever we did our, the Raven quest line, and mm -hmm. Matt had to get a sword or something. Yeah. So yeah, he would have died. He would have died. died. The, Matt, he, yeah, he would have died there. Yeah. All right, that's as far as we're going to go. That's the end of the encounter mode. Cool. That was fun. I don't like this game. I'm going to see how it plays, but this is way too fucking... There's a lot to keep track of. We need yeah. some whiteboards, like this size of whiteboards. Yeah. <laughs> like? I'm going to need a notebook to do my math, to track everything. Yeah. 
This is not a game, in my opinion, that you can just... You guys want to play a role-playing game? Just do a quick yeah. on-the-spot one-shot? Sure. Can't do that with this. Nope. Absolutely There's not. way too much shit in this. 100% should have gone the Starfinder route. <laughs> should have just jumped <laughs> right in there. Whenever you're close to dying, I just, just start stealthing game. against a life sense so you don't count as living problem solved. <laughs> Jesus. No, you don't immediately drown when you start making checks. Once you start... No! You if you critically fail... You suffocating when you start making checks. Which has special rules, I Which think. has special rules. So, once you start suffocating, you immediately have to make a DC 24 to save, or take 1d10 points of damage. And, if you critically fail that, you're, you're dead. just dead. You just die. That's just it. Because you pass out, and then you would float. No one could kill you still. And so you could technically... No one can kill you still. Just passing out like your body still tries to breathe. This is... We're, mm. we're going real life here, guys. So, like... See, because it used to be you can hold your breath for a number of rounds equal to your constitution score. Yeah. Ten rounds, it's about a minute. Joe just did That's that. That's heroic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for, yeah. like, a warrior person who has a high constitution and is out yeah. there kicking ass. You see ass. these people out there. There are people out there that can hold their breath for a long Michael time. Michael Phelps could do it for, like, a half hour. Like fishermen in, like, Indonesia or whatever, they go, like, they go they, surface diving for right, minutes. Right, right, yep. With their fucking spears and shit. If you sing enough, you can hold it yeah. for long. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about this. So... I know we want to do a campaign. I like Fiddle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's rethinking this. So, should this not work out? Mm -hmm. We'll just go to Pathfinder. Okay. I can live with that. Yeah. If, if we get six sessions into this and you guys are like, please stop. Don't do this to me anymore. We'll, we'll just like translate we'll the characters. We'll just translate yeah. the characters. Yeah. That that should be, be too hard. I should be able to mount our Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> oh I can make God. wands. I can make wands. <laughs> you could have all the wands. I can use them. Uh, Lord Arctic, it doesn't specify, but you are unconscious, and part of the unconscious condition is that you are prone. You can crawl. <laughs> you can and tell. shove. By definition, you could crawl. <laughs> but but While unconscious, <laughs> unconscious prevents you from taking action. Oh, so you're just laying there. Yeah. But... Your AC only goes down by four. Could you use a hero point to crawl? <laughs> you could use a hero... Could you, you Three can, hero points. You can't use hero points to prevent yourself from dying. Can what? you use, like, Why two not? to make another because, save? Because this doesn't give you the dying condition. It just kills you. Uh, Alright, I have an idea. That's weird. If we decide we don't want to continue this and we want to switch to Pathfinder, can we go through some of the books like Ultimate Campaign and Pathfinder Unchained and pick out some of the optional rules that arguably Paizo did much better to fix their system and try those out. For what? Sure. If we decide we don't want to do this and we want yeah. to switch to regular Pathfinder. Oh, we haven't. Well, just in general. I mean, just, I, can, I haven't ran 5th edition. We can always do that, too. If you want. I mean, there are tons But if you were in water, would you be under cover? <laughs> you would technically... Technically, yes. Because yeah. uh. cover is an, is an obstacle. Or uh, water is an obstacle. Yeah. I just... I don't... See, my, my thing is, is I, I feel like when they originally made Pathbender, they took two existing systems and merged them together, and it came out okay. Because they didn't really have to change, but... Starfinder was great. I love Starfinder. Starfinder feels fresh too. Yeah, it does. yeah. Starfinder feels like its own it doesn't thing. Feel complicated. Yeah. It doesn't feel like 3.5 at all. Yeah. It feels like they took parts of it and they're under the OGL to cover their asses, yeah. which they should be. But it feels great, in my opinion. The only thing we didn't get to try was ship combat. But even it so. read kind of interesting. It read kind of different. Yeah. Even if I didn't like it, the base system for Starfinder, which unique. is the easiest part to base this oh. off of. Felt great. Yep. I love running around, laser guns. 
Uh, yes, Lord Arctic, that is correct. The AC bonus while you're drowning is better than if you were on land and breathing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Especially if you're in the dark and you have a light on you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's, god, that's the other part about this. Yes. So, if, if you're in the dark so and you mad. can't see in the dark, I so I'm a human, it. I'm in a dark room, but there's a person in the hallway that has a light on, they have concealment against my attacks. So they have a benefit because they're standing in the light. But if they were next to me... It would be normal. By raw, that's how it reads. Yeah. Well, it actually specifically states that a, char a character in light gains the benefits of concealment. So backwards. Which blows my mind on like 100 levels. Just doesn't make any sense. I, I feel like... I understand what they were going for. I do. A lot of the points, I know yeah. what is intended. Right. But I feel like they went too deep into the let's define everything. But, but then, then they let's... didn't do everything. Right. But then let's not define some things. I feel like, based on what we've read, like there were a couple writers on this. And it was like, Joe, go to your room. Brad, go to your room. Rachel, go to your room. And then they like ran out of time and they just threw it together. <laughs> yeah, because like... like Without reading it. Out... <laughs> Does not complement seek. They are actually contradicting. Point out just feels unfinished. Yeah. It's one of the many things that feels unfinished. Yeah. There's lots of wordings that their sentences aren't done. Everything's a keyword in a way that I'm going to have to be opening this book 30 times around. Like, and going to random pages. 300, 195, 67, like. I thought it only started with the powers. Because that was the first thing that jumped out to me that bugged me. Yeah. That the class powers were mixed in with the spells. So, like, things that you get for taking levels in a class and specific class feats you gotta go find. are alphabetically yeah. mixed in with magic missile and light and all your regular spells. They're not separated They're not separate, at all. Yeah. And why would you not just put them under the class? Because even in the future, this is just a playtest book, mind you. It's not the final product. Yeah. Separate them out into different chapters. But even for this book, just put your class abilities with the class. Mm -hmm. Make this book as readable and functional as possible so people can actually play yeah, the game like, to give you the feedback you when need I for it. Even if it's broken as fuck. Just put everything where it needs to be. See, that, the that's, organization way, that's kills the way 4th edition did it. Is mm -hmm. everything, all the wizard powers were with wizard. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a block of powers later on that you had to go sort through that were alphabetically named. Everything was with the class that it assigned to. Even for Pathfinder 1 and 5th edition. Like, 5th yeah. edition Bard. For Bardic Inspiration. All the Bards? That ability it's, is under Bard. It's in Bard, yeah. There's spells that are you know, spell. applicable to multiple yeah. classes, or even sometimes just one class, but they're classified as spells. Those can be in the spells, with a spell list. That's a category of things. But, like, specific class powers being lumped in with those makes zero sense to me from an organizational standpoint. I don't know. This is weird. Like, normally by the time they get a playtest out, it doesn't feel this... Rough. This kind of feels like an alpha. That is laid out like this. For a book. It should not be that rough. If it this really was should. like your initial PDF, yeah, these and that was like roughly it, put together PDF, I'd be fine with that. I'd be like, okay, there's a lot of work they have to do. But this is I'm alpha. Not. This is not closed beta or open beta. This is this is pre-alpha. Like this is like these are the ideas we have. Let's shove this all together and figure out how it goes. It's like Ashley said. There was like eight writers on this, and they didn't talk to each other while they made this. They didn't have these common sense conversations we're having yeah. right now. Which feels strange because we that's had absolutely these for necessary. a campaign setting yeah. that was very rules light. <laughs> like if the day ever comes that I work on a system, be it something Starcold Studios related or just my own for fun. Like the whole cover in the darkness thing, like I feel but, like we arrived at that immediately. You didn't have to go through any hoops no. of logic. It presented itself in the wording as being problematic. It's saying yeah. it you out know? loud. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Like half of these we're reading them and we're like there are seven Like I can understand statement. writing these on a first pass and even missing them on a second pass, yep. but all it shows is you didn't How sit did down and talk to QA? people. <laughs> basically. <laughs> they didn't have QA. It, it's if you it's need a matter of hearing QA. the logic out loud. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just like, you know, just discussions. What do we work on this week? They're not having their scrum meetings. It wouldn't pass testing. <laughs> no. no, no. The, the, there's 12 different versions of the same acceptance test in here, and they're all passing right now. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. They do. That's the worst part is Paizal has 
tons of editors on staff. They're big. Yeah, I mean, they got a way bigger team than what, you know, they Wasi's used to do been working with. Dragon Magazine, which was phenomenal when they ran. Paizo has a bigger staff. According than to this, the they D&D have team 1, 2, 3, yeah, 4, what, 5, yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 editors. Y'all need more, let us know. <laughs> 12. I'm really good at this, so. <laughs> Sign me up. We love. Pathfinder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I love Paizo as a company. I think they make great shit. Oh, wait. Yeah, I bought three books at Gen Con. I mean, yeah, we all have yeah. books. So, like, for the... We're gonna buy it. I want to love it. That's, you know... Yeah. I want to... And I'm sure one day I will love it. It's just not today. If we ever get the errata. Yeah. Please don't change backpacks, though. They need to stay the same. <laughs> they need to be... <laughs> backpack explosion. Yeah. Do change shields, because... Please, no one wants to count. I don't dents. want to keep track of dents. No. That's the dumbest fucking rule I've ever heard. Why is it just shields? Yeah, that is it should be armor. armor. Uh, yeah. The shield. It's because it's only when you use it's the an action. the reduced damage action that you have the chance to break. It. Ashley can use it to up her AC all she wants, and it won't dent the shield. It's when you use that specific reaction because it brings hardness into play. You Why doesn't my armor? Because you don't. I'm not going to use that reaction probably I mean, that's, ever. That's why is it my decision to reduce the damage? If I'm using the shield as AC... Yeah, if you're physically bringing it up to mitigate an attack... Why, why is it would my decision? It's a good question. Because you're already using the AC, so if it hits it, then like... Because I get what, cause what you're saying is Well, they did release it for free, Lord Arctic. You can go get the yeah. PDS for oh, the yeah, system for, right for yeah. free on their site. No, I bought the because I'm a physical kind of guy. Like, I like... <laughs> yeah, you are. And because hey. we want to su- support no, them. We have played Pathfinder for years. So, but. to the to the shield thing, I get I get the, the, the concept is it's got hardness. You're using it to block. However, my armor, when I'm wearing it and take damage, takes damage... But it doesn't, because we're not trying to kill ourselves. See, the, the, the part that, that bothers me so is why that, that system exist? you can use a wooden shield to reduce damage, but you can't use your steel armor to yeah, reduce damage. Yeah, that's what I mean. To be fair, the there is... The subsystem makes no sense there if you is don't do a, it all. You're right. It has yeah. to be all or nothing. All or nothing. Right. Because there's a big debate on... Logically, a lot of people think armor should be damage reduction... Yeah, I'm, I'm in that same boat. Same I'm like, fine with it, but it doesn't, and armor shields the only thing that does. Like, it is, yeah, it's weird. And I understand why they don't, because then you're not replacing your armor all the time. You don't have all this downtime activity to like repair your armor. Well, you do it's now. Like, but they're trying. But to But where's skip the repair? It. Did we get? Did we talk about repair? We didn't get to the downtime it's, yet. It's okay. part of. Crafting. It's literally in the next thing. Oh. I just skipped it. But like, there's there's a lot of parts of this that like I love the way that the classes are laid out. Yeah, class really options cool. are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Like ancestry and background, right? Great. Like m- making making your your race give you hit points, making your race give you feat options. That stuff's pretty cool. I like the fact that like everyone started out with the same ability scores. Everybody you know what? Can... All that stuff is from Starfinder. Starfinder. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just saying. <laughs> they should have just taken what they had for Starfinder and adapted it. It would have been amazing. A fucking. They should have just mixed it with RPG. Pathfinder, but they invented like a ton of. I'm perfectly things. fine with the three action action economy. Yeah, I think that is that great. as a base is awesome. Yeah, I think that's that's. Ingenious. You just have to do the logical things with it. Yeah, yeah. and they did a lot of illogical it's, things with it with all their like definition. The sub actions, the sub systems, I like the, the spells you have to and the way track. the spells work and stuff because I like it because it. it uh, it's yes. gonna work well for like spell cards and stuff, like easy to make. Mm-hmm. That gives them yeah. a product, but like I like that about Fifth Edition was like I had a hand of shit I could do. Yeah, could do the same like, thing oh. with like mm-hmm. yeah Pathfinder now, which you yeah. could and you could do it with Fury. Pathfinder, but I made sort it. Of. I what made cards on Violet and had them mm-hmm. for like two levels because then I had so many cards, like mm-hmm. it didn't even make sense. Yeah, at that point. And yeah, Shima Panda, uh, Pathfinder and Chain did have yeah. armor as damage reduction. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying that's like, what we're what Joe was. Suggesting we using Pathfinder Unchained or mm-hmm. Ultimate Campaign, they have a bunch of really cool optional right. so rules. So if we go back to OG Pathfinder, really we can get optional rules. Pathfinder or Starfinder's like, was it health and stamina? Yeah. Health, health and stamina. I really like that. It's a better representation of yeah. Because yeah. I could hit you with like multiple things and not actually like, be on track to kill you. Like, right. And I'm shooting you with lasers. Because it, it wasn't symbolizing getting hit by things. When, it was yes. symbolizing, I dodged, or I'm getting mm-hmm. tired of dodging yeah. these lasers. When did you get stamina back? 
every like it's like a ten minute rest. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's why I thought as I was because I like that too because it makes it easier to have multiple encounters. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Ten minute I'm rest. Quick. If you spent um, there was like a resource you had. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that you spent uh, that resource should, yeah. was used for multiple things. And I agree. Once I really like that campaign. Day. It was tied I, to I think your key ability thing. Mm-hmm. Like, right. It was what resonance should be. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. That was what resonance should be. Yeah, I mean, of course it doesn't, because they don't really ever take into account that kind of stuff, and, and damage scales so fast that armor just can't yeah. keep up. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we no, did. I, I, I personally, I get it, and I like the system, but like, I wouldn't necessarily want to play with it, because mm-hmm. like, it, that's just upkeep I don't want to have to deal with. Mm-hmm. It's like why we don't really track ammo, because like... It's, it's it's a different flavor for yeah. sure. Like yeah, so if we're doing really the dungeon crawl it, and that's the, one of the things we're doing, and it's added, but like it doesn't add anything usually to our games. To the type of games we play, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So, I would love to run a dungeon survival. I, would I mean, love I would run it. To run it, it as like a standalone adventure, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. we run Tomb of Fours. That's what yeah. we or, run. That's what I really want to get into. We do a dark play <laughs> survival <laughs> group and like. Right. There's yeah. a good chance you're going to die this combat. Like, Actually bring back a character. See, those yeah. are like the yeah. things you need to be prepared for, though, yeah. like going into it. You need to know it. that ahead of yeah. time. So I don't want Joe to give me six months of worth of backstory right. for a character I'm going to kill. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't right. want to show up with like a big backstory. Attached. And I just, mm-hmm. I'll, sh- I'll show up with like Steve the farmer made soldier because the Dark War is fucking lit. More <laughs> like theme parky yeah. adventures, yeah. I call yeah. them, yeah. because they're more. Yeah. I agree. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of this that just feels out of place. I'm sure they'll work through it. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right, guys. You guys have We're a good tired. one. Cool. Uh, we'll be back Saturday with a long version of this. We'll probably do a few more comments and actually start the campaign. And tune yes. in tomorrow for nice. Stop, Drop, and Roll. Yeah. Yay. Joe's game is tomorrow night. And then Friday, I have no fucking idea. I don't mm. think we're doing no, anything. we don't do it on Friday. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're not going to the movies tomorrow. Okay. All right, guys. Bye. Okay, bye.